back 19 to the country. My fans said I'll be calling all of the play-by-play -play action. I'm joined by former University of Wisconsin head football coach John Jardine. Today, the university is using this Big Ten opener against the Wolverines as the 100th year of football at Wisconsin. That's got to be some impetus for the players to get fired up, not only for this game, but for the Wolverines as well. Well, I think that's true. I think there's been a lot of uh, atmosphere on campus this week, a lot of players coming back. I think Rufus Ferguson talked to the team yesterday. So uh, the hype is here, and now they got to perform. You mentioned perform. Michigan comes in here with two outstanding marquee players. Their quarterback, Michael Taylor, their tailback, Tony Bowles, a dynamite one-two punch. No question about it. Uh, Bowles is a really a great running back, and Taylor has given them an offense that you haven't seen much of Michigan. Uh, remember, years ago, it used to be just throw the ball to the tight end. Right now, Taylor runs the ball, and he hits the wide receivers. He has yet to throw an interception through the Wolverines' first three games. Might point out, they come in here with a one-and-two record, very uncharacteristic for a 20th year head football coach Bo Schimbeckler. Oh, there's no question about that either. And Bo will have this team ready. You know, he likes to point to his Big Ten opener. And the Big Ten's been kind of down in the offseason. And uh, I'm sure Schimbeckler has done a lot of work this week getting ready for Wisconsin. Now, for Wisconsin, they had an outstanding defensive effort in their 23-3 loss at Miami last Saturday. Defense was the name of the game. And when we speak of defense, we have to probably look at their leader, not only in terms of tackling, but their spiritual leader. Senior, David Wings, number 48. Well, Wings played a great game against Miami as long, along with a lot of other defensive players. But I think you're right. He's the inspiration. When he makes some good hits early in the game, it seems to uh, spur up the defense. Let's face it. For Wisconsin to have a chance, number one, they have to avoid turnovers. They've had 15 turnovers in their first three games. Eleven of those have been by fumbles. You can't give this game to Michigan. Oh, that's right. And I think uh, that's one thing they've got to stop today. Uh, against Miami, they turned, they were in the game, but they turned the ball over. They've done it uh, for three weeks in a row. And against Michigan, you just can't do that. If you give them an opportunity, they'll take advantage of it. And they need some production out of their offense. They've got to put some points on the board, if nothing else, to get their defense a chance to rest over on the sideline. Yeah, I think the offensive line is what we're looking for. Them. They've got to get off and get after Michigan and force them to open up the game a little bit. It's the maize and blue against the Cardinal and white of Wisconsin. The opening kickoff is moments away. The opening kickoff has already started. Mike Gillette got a good foot into it. And upon the return, there was thought to be a fumble, but the referee said, no, it's Wisconsin's football. So the Badger offense will trot out onto the field. Not particularly good field position in this rather murky day here at Camp Randall Stadium. As Tony Lowry and company come out onto the field for their first snap at about the 14-yard line. Well, we were just talking about turnovers, and boom, it happened quickly enough. And but fortunately, uh, he was ruled down. So Wisconsin takes over on this 14. Tony Lowry working up over center. Matt Jokia, a starter this week in place of Keith Peterson, who, as a result, moves out to the tackle slot. Pitch back now to Marvin Artley. Artley has some running room, has the first down, and then some ridden hard out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Good running room for Marvin Artley. And a little different look. Uh, no normally, they're sending Artley up the middle. That time, they used him as the pitch back. So Marvin Artley had his problems at Miami, but today he's gotten off to a good start. Wisconsin offensively, Anderson wraps Magazzini, another new starter, Jokey Nelson and Peterson, who moves out to the left tackle spot. The receivers in backfield, David Burks, Tony Lowry, Marvin Artley, who just had that splendid carry, Steve Vinci and Scott Bester. First and 10 for the Badgers now at the 29-yard line. Vinci, Artley, the running backs. First man through, and Marvin Artley peels off about six more yards. Good running room, just a basic play, and that's what the coaches said they were going to try to do this week, John. Run about five basic plays. Well, and the other thing is the offensive line in these last two plays, they've gotten off the ball, and that's very important. The up-front people for the Wolves, White, Osman, Mester. We'll be hearing a lot from Mester as the game wears along. Alex Marshall, Grant, Milligan, Abrams, the linebackers. And the secondary, Arnold Murray, Wellborn, and David Key. Second down and three, a seven-yard gain for Marvin Artley. It's been all number 34. He can carry the bacon quite well for the Badger offense. Lowry pitches back again to Artley, trying to get to the outside, and tripped up a nice defensive play by the Wolverines. David Key came up to make the stop, tripping up Artley, and a loss on that play. Well, that was difficult. Michigan changed their defense at the last second. They brought their corner right in the line of scrimmage, and he played off the block well and was able to come up and make the tackle. The Wolverines rank number one in the Big Ten in the preseason against rushing, yielding only 144 yards a game. Of course, Wisconsin's defense has been pretty good against the run this year. They are second in the conference, 153 yards per game. So after the loss, third down and six. Passing situation perhaps for Tony Lowry. 
Straight drop back, gets a pressure from Mester, and he's sacked by Mark Mester. Trying to become only the second player in Big Ten history to become an all Big Ten player four straight years. The only player to do it, Ray Stackwitz, a punter at Michigan State. Well, if you watch this, you'll see he just got by the blocker. One sweep with his right hand, and boom, he's in on the quarterback. Lowry never had a chance. He got by Todd Nelson on that play, and Lowry was sacked, and that rings in Wisconsin's punter, Chris Hyman, who equaled a school record down at Miami last Saturday, 11 punts, as long as 52 yards, 36 average last Saturday against the Miami defense. Ten Miami men on the Hurricanes. line of scrimmage. They could be coming after him. They are. A high wobbly kick. Wisconsin down. Gets a fairly good bounce. The ball bounces out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Well, it's evident Michigan was going to put some pressure on the kicker that time. They rushed 10 people. Uh, kind of gave up on the thought that Wisconsin might run the fake kick again. So the Wolverine offense comes out. There you see him. The dean of the Big Ten coaches in his 20th season on the sidelines for the Michigan Wolverines, Glenn Bo Schimbeckler. Yeah, he's got an outstanding record. Being the dean is not the big thing today in the Big Ten. <laughs> no, that's true. The dean is one and two. <laughs> The quarterback, Michael Taylor, out of Lincoln Heights, Ohio. Of course, their big man right there. Tony Bowles has running room. Look out to the 40. He's gone. He will not be caught. Touchdown, Wolverine. Perfect execution. They led the fullback in and the linebacker. They blocked everybody else out. He had a great hole, and then he made one move. Excellent first play by the University of Michigan. You could have driven a Mack truck through that hole. And, and big, beefy offensive line, you got to credit them because they gave Bowles a great hole to run through. But just watch this. They're going to pull the guard and lead with the fullback. I mean, it, one missed tackle, two missed tackles, three missed tackles. Three guys had shots at him, but there was no catching Tony Bowles, who came in as the number two rusher in the Big Ten. He won't do anything to hurt those stats. I'm sure that makes Bull very happy to open up the game on the first play. Boom, right now. And Mike Gillette, who has really been a picture of perfection in his years at Michigan, converts on the point after. Coming in, he was 98 of 100, make it 99 out of 101. Here's another angle, and this hurts to look at this. Great block on wings. He runs by Hunter. He runs by Thomas, and there's no catch at number 42. Well, he did have a couple of shots there where he could have been tackled. They just left their feet a little early, and can't dive and bring this guy down. He's too quick. He'll step away from you. You know, Michigan has always had a history of outstanding tailbacks. You think back to last year, Jamie Morris and what he did for four years, and now Tony Bowles seems to be ready to step into that role. I'll tell you one thing that really makes a tailback look good is a good offensive line. Uh, believe me, <laughs> Michigan keeps coming up with good offensive lines, and their tailbacks keep improving. And they work together very well. But when you run the I formation like Michigan does, uh, you've got to have a line that gets off the ball and stays on its block. Well, I hate to bring up last year's ball game, but last year it was not a pretty sight in the first half at Ann Arbor. Michigan scored on their first five possessions. It was 42 to nothing at the half, so Don Morton would hate to see history repeat itself. Here's a look at the meetings between these two schools, and Michigan has a rather handy lead, 38 to 8. In Madison games, they are 16-2 and 1. Troy Vincent. And Fred Owens back to receive the kickoff from Mike Gillette. So the Badgers need to try to get something going here in a hurry as they are down 7-0, and we've got 12-34 left in the first quarter. And Vincent from about three yards deep elects to run it out. And Wisconsin's going to be right back where they started from on their initial drive, right around the 15-yard line. Michigan showing excellent coverage on their kick specialty teams. They got down in there, and anytime you can get them inside the 20, you've done a good job. So there you see Tony Lowry as he trots back out onto the field for Wisconsin's offense. Great drive there, huh? <laughs> nine One seconds. play <laughs> in nine seconds. Well, that's the way any coach likes to open up a game. It Especially the on the road. And hope it just pops right now. Vincey and Artley, the tandem set behind. Tony Lowry, the sophomore quarterback out of Columbus, Ohio. Lowry and had no place to go. It looked like he was looking for the pitch, but Michigan pretty much had all of the options covered. Messner did a good job that time. Well defended that time. None of the Michigan players were knocked on the ground. As you'll see, they were all able to play off their blocks and move down the line of scrimmage. Lowry has nowhere to go but just take the ball and try to cut it up. John Milligan made the initial stop on Tony Lowry coming in. Milligan 
had 26 tackles, 15 of them solos. He's out of Trenton, Michigan. Second down and 10 for the Badgers. No gain following that play. Lowry up over center, Matt Jokey. Once again, penetration. You had two Michigan linemen that time get across the line of scrimmage. Messner was one. I couldn't see the number. Brent the White was the guy that got him. It's, uh, you can't allow that penetration when you're running the veer. Missed most of the last season because of an injury, but uh, he looks healthy today. 6'5", 248-pound senior from Dayton, Ohio. He had four tackles for loss. Make it five for a loss now. Wisconsin, third and 13. Here we see Messner, but White is the guy that's in there. Messner was just kind of finishing off what White didn't get, but White got most of Lowry. Lowry, and he just... In his haste to try to run away from Mester, just fell to the turf. So now Hymans has really got his work cut out for him. He's going to be deep in his own end zone trying to punt. And so now, Coach, what do you try to do? Do you try to set up the return, or do you try to go for the punt maybe? Well, Michigan, under this circumstance, I think they would gamble the first time. Right now, I think I'd try to set up a return because they're going to get the ball in good field position no matter what happens. And I think it would be behoove them to go ahead and set up a nice return here and try to get the ball up the field. So let's see if they do what Coach Jardine said. Hymans. They've got 10 men up on the line, <laughs> unless they're going to just try to protect there. Contain. A low snap bounces. They come after it. They got a piece of the ball, and now they throw the flag. So it should be a roughing call, but it appeared they got a piece of the ball. Now let's see if we can get a shot of Coach Schimbecker. He's about at the 30 yard line now. He might have something to say about this. See, Bo didn't listen to me. <laughs> He's saying they got a piece of the ball. If we can catch it on replay, I think he might have a case. Low snap. Oh, it's hard to see right there, but if they got a piece, then that is a bad call by the official. Michigan players down. We might see it from this angle here if it's not obstructed by the goalpost. David Liner, the uh, cornerback, is down there in the end zone. He's still down. Bull's not very happy about this call, I'm sure. <laughs> He's saying, who hit the punter? That's what we're saying up here. <laughs> Arnold uh, gets up uh, rather slowly. He's got a, a hand injury. You can see the cast. It's wrapped on his right arm. Oh, Bo. Yeah. He's got the officials in his back pocket now, though. Don't you think he's worked him? That's all he needs to do for the rest of the game. He'll get every call from here on out. Well, normally I don't agree with him, but there I think he might have a, a reasonable opportunity to be arguing with the officials. But Wisconsin's going to be forced to punt again. We'll see whether Michigan's going to go after it again. I bet you they, they uh, contain now. <laughs> That's just a five-yard penalty. It's not an automatic first down. Driving kick this time by Hymans. It's going to be fielded by Callaway. Just shy of the 50-yard line. And good coverage that time by Paul Chris. Good job by the special teams for the Badgers. And once again, Michigan put the full rush on. They had 10 people going. Nobody to block the Wisconsin defenders coming down the field. So the return back had little chance. There you see some of the offensive front by Michigan. And they are big. We'll get a chance. We didn't have a chance to set the offensive front for the Wolverines, barely Tony Bowles had the ball in his hands and he was off to the track meet. I don't think they're running that fast over in Seoul, Korea for the way he ran that one in for the six. Well, they've got people 280, 287. They've got some real big offensive linemen. And don't forget about Greg Skrepnik, 322 pounds of beef, the largest recruit ever. This time we see the fullback Leroy Horde out of New Orleans. He had good running room, picks up about eight yards. Good running by Horde that time. That play was really designed to go off right tackle. He saw it was kind of clogged up, so he made a nice break back to his left and picked up good yardage on first down. The offensive line, we've alluded to them. Jeff Brown, an outstanding tight end, but here are the tackles. Doring, Hussar, the guard, Vitali, the center of veteran. Dingman, who's out of Wisconsin, and Skrepnik, the big tackle. The receivers in backfield, McMurtry, Taylor, Horde, Bowles, and Callaway. Second and four for the Wolverine offense. And that looked to be uh, a blown assignment by somebody. Either the center blew the snap count or the quarterback uh, miscalled it. It almost looked like the center snapped the ball before he was supposed to because the quarterback was a little surprised and then he just took the ball and tried to go off the right side. You wouldn't expect that from a John Vitale who is a starter. Here's Wisconsin's defense. Wolf, Banasak, Davey up front. Davey had a good game against the, 
the Hurricanes last Saturday. Batch, Hunter Wings, Kissling, the linebackers. In the backfield, Mayo, Thomas, Noka, White, third and four. Wisconsin showing blitz. Let's see if they come after Taylor. Little delay, and they stack up bowls this time. Good job by the Badger defense. David Wings also in on the hit. Number 25, Raphael Robinson, the nickel back, but he came in and made the stop. Well, a good gamble that time. Wisconsin defensively uh, came with the blitz, and Michigan was running the eye draw play, and there were too many people there for them to block. Robinson coming in from behind, and he grabbed Bowles from behind. By the time he slowed him down, that afforded the other Badger defenders to get in there and finish him off. Michigan will be forced to punt here. Mike Gillette, 15 punts through the Wolverines' first three games. There you see his numbers, 56 yards as long as I would imagine he'll try to angle this toward the corner. And just as I say, angle, he goes straight down the middle of the field and into the end zone it goes. So it'll be a touchback. And the Badgers will have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Well, a good job that time. I Wisconsin's defense, uh, Michigan enjoying great field position there, and they were unable to move the ball. Now here's where you need some production. We talked about it in our pregame. We need some production from your offense. Time, possession, drive. Well, that's true. You know, in the first half against Miami, uh, Wisconsin had the ball over 20 minutes. Uh, they really did some good uh, work offensively, at least holding on the football, and that's what you got to do against Michigan for sure. The same tandem for the Badgers in the backfield. Vincey, Artley. Split to the far side, Scott Bester, David Burks, the man in motion. Lowry looking for Burks and in and out of his hands. A catchable ball. Burks had to come back for it. It appeared to have hit his shoulder pad and he just couldn't hang on. Now that was a good call. First and ten and uh, Michigan looking for a lot of things so they didn't have a big rush on him. Lowry had good protection, was able to stand in there and throw the ball. Can't ask any more of your offensive line. You can't ask any more in terms of the way the route was run. Just got to hang on to the ball once it gets there. So following the incompletion, second and ten once again. Burks to the near side. Sean Peters. It might be Bill Williams can't catch the number over on the far side. Lowry goes down the line, decides to keep it, and he might have picked up a yard, tripped up initially by the Wolverines. Number 59, Alex Marshall. Marshall, Marshall really did a good job that time. He was trying to play both the pitch man and the quarterback. He actually was a little bit outside of Lowry, and when Lowry made his move upfield, he was able to react and come back. That has been a concern of Bo Schembeck for his defense. Of course, they did a fairly good job against the Miami Hurricanes until about the last six minutes of the game when the Hurricanes did just that. It was a hurricane for their offense, and they came from behind and win 31-30. Third nine, big play for the Badger offense. They like to try to keep this drive alive. The defense would do the same as well. Little delay, Vincey, and Vincey's going to be hit and stopped initially by number 95 for the Wolverines, J.J. Grant, second leading returning tackler for the Wolves from 87. A good call by Wisconsin. Michigan certainly looking for the pass. They had a lot of pressure up front and were able to block those linemen. Unfortunately, didn't get the linebackers blocked, and they were able to come up and stop them short of the first down. Well, the busiest man for Wisconsin thus far has been number 15, Chris Hymans. He's in for his third punt. Back deep again, Callaway, the center, Paul Christ, Mr. Versatility for Wisconsin. He's played about six different positions for the Badgers, and he's done a good job in the all. Ten men in the line. Good snap. No rush this time. End over end kick, and it goes sailing out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Not a particularly good punt that time by Hyman. He's a walk-on. Well, once again, Michigan going to take over with excellent field position, and uh, you just can't give, keep giving Michigan that great field position. Now they had the, they've had two possessions. Their first time they had the ball, they didn't have it very long, nine seconds to be exact, and Bowles ran it in for a 55-yard TD. Second time, three downs and a punt. Taylor, the quarterback this year for the Wolverines, Demetrius Brown held that position a year ago, but he threw too many interceptions. 16 of them to be exact. That's definitely a good way to get into Bowles' doghouse. First and 10, the I formation. Here we see Bowles trying to jitterbug, and there's David Wing. Good tackle that time by Wings. He wrapped him up. Malvin Hunter, the sophomore, came in to finish him off. Good job by Wings. He moved laterally very well, and when he saw the back start up in the hole, and he came up to make the hit. Wings has 26 hits this year, 17 of them solo tackles, and here's another solo that he can add to his list. Got good pursuit. 
Did a good job. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Davy did a good job on that play getting penetration. Van is Andy is in now. A little play action fake. Taylor gets some pressure and he's going to be sacked on the play. John oh, Banasak finished him off, but Wisconsin got some outstanding pressure by Davey, the man you just spoke of, John. Well, they certainly did. One of the Michigan offensive linemen missed his block, and as a result, there were two guys coming, and the quarterback really didn't have a chance. He just had to make his move, Galloway, and look to get out of there. A Banasak sack, if you will, his second this year. Taylor, and he didn't even get a chance to set up. That's what you got to do with a Michigan quarterback. If Taylor goes back there, you just got to get on him. So it's third down and an acre. Third and 20 to be exact. Wisconsin showing blitz. They back out of it. Now they bring Noka. They're going deep. And it's going to be caught, I believe. It's a it goes to the offense. Catch. It goes to the offense. Back deep was Brad Mayo, and he's complaining to the officials, but it'll fall on deaf ears. The pass brought in by Greg McMurtry. Good job by McMurtry. That pass, as you'll see now, is underthrown. He was able to stop. Of course, the defender run down the field can't see it, but McMurtry stops and comes back for the ball right here. You'll see it. He slows down a little bit and then comes back to make the catch. Anytime it's a simultaneous catch, which that didn't appear to be, no. it'll go to the offense. Boy, you have them stopped in their tracks. Third and 20, and then they break a big one on you like that. Greg McMurtry, outstanding receiver. And he's got the Wolverines at the 21 yard line first and 10 here's Bowles almost tripped up by Noka slowed down and then Banasak was in there to finish him off well a great job that time Anoka. he was up in the backfield forced the back to make a move and by that time the rest of the defense was able to react Wisconsin has got a lot of players banged and nicked up on defense Kissling has an injury Greg Thomas has an injury Don Davey has an injury they have a lot of key people who are probably not at or near 100 percent but they're in there playing got to give them credit for that they certainly do and after the performance they put on last week I'm sure they're fired up first man through and look out and it's a touchdown. Chris Horn, who just came in at fullback, and he reels it off from about 21 yards out, and the Wolverines now lead it 13 to nothing. Big hole, and he filled it. Well, it was a quick fullback track right up the middle. Wisconsin probably looking for an option or something coming to the outside, and they were able to hit that very quick and get past the linebackers before they knew it. Here you'll see it again. Just a little quick trap. Number 79 doing the trapping. He ran right by Banasak. Good, good blocking there. So the Wolverines have had three big plays, and they've all hurt. Gillette in. I'll use it now to get it out of the way. He's razor sharp on the point after. Okay? <laughs> so it's now 14 to nothing. Wolverines, here it is from the end zone. You'll see it, a little quick trap. Boom. It hits that hole and right through the middle. I mean, by the time that the defenders realized where he was, he was past them. So the Wolverines are now in the driver's seat at 14 to nothing, and once again, Wisconsin's offense has got to come to light. Well, they certainly do. Uh, Wisconsin's defense playing well, except on a couple of plays where Michigan really hit them quick and was able to get into the backfield. And once those people get in that defensive backfield, they've got enough speed to go all the way. But Wisconsin offensively has got to keep the ball, eat up some time on the clock, and really get some points on the board. So back deep for the Badgers, Vincent, number 24, and number 29, Fred Owens. And there you see Bo Schimbeckler. He's ranting and raving all the time. He never lets up. That's, that's just a sign of his intensity. He always wears those sunglasses, too. I don't think the sun will see us today, but uh, he's got those shades on. The hate fry look. <laughs> well, Bo's a very intense man, and he wants his football team to get better every day. That's, that's what you got to do. So Gillette, who's been about as busy as Chris Hyman, Wisconsin's punter back in to kick it off again. His third kickoff, second after a touchdown. Good high kick. Vincent will run under it at about the four-yard line to the middle of the field, trying to cut back to the far side. 
and he advances the ball up to about the 27 yard line so the Badgers will have a little bit better field position than what they've had on their earlier possessions. Well, the special teams offensively for Wisconsin did a pretty good job that time. They got a couple of good blocks up the middle and were able to get him up the field. There you see Wisconsin second year coach Don Morton has to be concerned about his offense and their ability just to keep the ball for some possession time. Talking about, first injuries. Yeah, talking about injuries, they've got some people injured in the offensive line. Brady Pierce, Nick Polzinski, a tackle both out with injuries. Lowry intending to pass for his tight end, Chris, and it's intercepted. He threw that high. That was a bootleg pattern. He rolled out. He had a guard leading him, but he really didn't have his shoulders turned up, and that ball floated on him a little bit, went over the tight end's hands and into a Michigan defender. Veda Murray with his third interception of the season. And that's exactly you're buttering the, the bread for the Wolverines. Here you see a little bootleg action rolling out. Doesn't get himself set and turned up and you see that ball just floats over the tight end's head. Almost looks like he's trying to guide the ball there rather than throw the ball there. So a turnover and that kills whatever Wisconsin's offense was trying to put together in terms of some momentum out of the eye again. Board and Bowles in motion. Callaway. Here's another gigantic hole, and Bowles fills it in a hurry, picks up about eight yards. Well, that's the same play that they scored on the first play of the game, and they just lead that fullback up the middle, and Bowles looks for daylight. He almost got six yes. more, too. <laughs> he almost jumped out of the booth there. The drive covering 55 yards, of course, the key play, the 21-yard run by Horn. And the Wolverines are tooting their own horn at 14-0, and we are under four minutes in the first quarter. Well, this is a dangerous time for Wisconsin. Uh, you hope the defense can make something happen here. Or this could be a, a long afternoon. Kolasar in motion. Bowles, good hole, first down, driven back, but he has the first down. Well, that time they ran that play just one position outside. They ran it off tackle that time, and they blocked people down and kicked out, and he had a nice hole. Michigan got off to an 0 and 2 start. It was their worst start since 1959. Of course, the two losses by a total of only three points to Notre Dame and Miami. Tom Doring led the play that time. Now he's 6'7, 277. And he's small. <laughs> I say Skrepnik is 322 pounds. When he came to the Wolverines, his estimated weight, 340 pounds. He started in high school at age 13. Here's Bowles. Look out. It's a track race. He deeks, he dives inside the five. Well, they changed up their blocking a little bit. They used some cross blocking that time. It worked very effectively. They brought the tackle down, brought the guard around, and kicked out on the defensive outside end. And he had a big hole. Here it is, right here. See him blocking down and the guard rolling to the outside. He just goes where he has the feel for an elusive runner. Coming in, averaging 141 yards on the ground per game. He has done nothing to hurt his average. Not at all. One thing Michigan does well is their receivers get down the field and get in the way of the defensive backs. That's why we see them showing up so late here. Uh, somebody was down there harassing them and didn't have a chance to get in. Here's the full house backfield, the wishbone. And trying to run off tackle on the play. Not much of a gain was Tracy Williams out of Sarasota, Florida. Well, this is the type of situation Bo loves. He got the, he gets the ball down inside the five and he'll load up with everybody. Both backs leading him in the hole there. Now before the Badgers had their chin straps fastened, they were down 7-0. It's now a 14-0 count, and the Wolverines looking to add to that total. As we see, the full house backfield, double tight end. You think they'll pass? Bowles stops. Good defensive effort that time. Wisconsin shed off the blockers and stood them up in the hole. Good job. Hit initially by David Wings, the helmetless player there. The hit was so hard, completely knocked his helmet off. Brendan Lynch was in on that play. A number of people really doing a good job of getting rid of their blockers and stopping the penetration. Third and goal from the two. Here it is again, David Wings. There goes the helmet. I mean, he just lowered his helmet. It was helmet to helmet. Williams, Ford, and Bowles out of the wishbone behind Michael Taylor. Little option, pitch, pitch back to Bowles. 
Well, that's what that full house backfield does. You know, they're running it in there, running it in there. All of a sudden, boom, he runs the option, comes down. There's only one man to cover two. Quarterback made the right decision. Second touchdown of the afternoon of the first quarter. That back for goals. Well, the, the worst possible scenario has happened, but then that's not the first time that's ever happened against a Michigan team. Good fake to the fullback. You see, he comes down the line, he waits till the last second, pitches it out, nobody's there. Brendan Lynch was there, but there was no way he was going to catch up with Tony Bowles. Gillette in for his third point after. And it's perfect. And the Wolverines lead 21 to nothing, and we have a minute 23 remaining in the first quarter. Michigan took advantage of the turnover. That's just what we talked about earlier in the show that just can't have that and boom they turned it over and Michigan moves it right down the field and scores. Well you talk about regrouping. You got to do that and then some you got to get some Elmer's glue to keep things together. You can't give up over on the sideline if you're Wisconsin. You know that guy is not going to give up over on the far sideline. Well it's up to the offense. They've just got to get something going and in the first two plays of the game, the offensive line did get off the mark pretty good. Lowry a little jumpy on that last series threw the pass over the head, but they've just got to get themselves together and say, we got to keep this ball moving. One hundredth year celebration of Wisconsin at the university, and it's been all this team celebrating thus far, the Wolverines. Gillette in for the fourth time. You know, last night they had a big dinner for a year of football and were really some former Wisconsin greats. So a lot of them showed up, and I think everybody really had a great time. Rufus Ferguson, Bill America, a couple of players you had the great luxury and opportunity to coach. Yeah, they were both introduced and they were asked to stand up on the chair so people could see them. <laughs> Not exactly big players. Rufus about 5'6", and Merrick about 5'9". Gillette. To Owens, shy of the five, to the ten, trying to run up the middle, trying to get to the outside, ran into his own man Leon Hunt, and he is going to be knocked down shy just of the 20-yard line. Now there's a case of Michigan doing a good job. They stayed in their lanes. The ball was kicked way over to the right, and of course he made the move going all the way to his right, and those people stayed in their lanes. As you'll see here, he runs clear across the field, but the Michigan players are there waiting for him. Owens tries to turn it up there. So the Badgers now trying to put something together. Vince C. Artley, the tandem in the backfield. Bester split to the far side. Two tight ends. Lowry keeping himself. Picks up maybe three yards. Well, they run the veer to the short side of the field. He fakes to the dive back and then takes the ball on the line. Michigan playing it very well. They're getting off their blocks and moving laterally. Drive number three, six plays, 43 yards, just over three minutes. Capped off by Mr. Bowles, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Second and seven for the Badger offense. They need some production like the Wolverines offense has gotten thus far. We wind down under 40 seconds in the first period. Mike Teeter, and it knows guard now for the Wolverines. Lowry gets some pressure. Pass and it's intercepted, batted around and knocked off and picked up by J.J. Grant. Well, that time he forced it in. That was supposed to be the quick pop pass. And the receiver, Burks, coming on in the middle, and he was covered well, and he threw it, bounced off of one defender's hands, and then Grant put it on the other. Grant in the right place at the right time. He picks up the deflection for the interception. Well, that's the old tip drill. You know, every team in America works on it every single day. Defensive backs really tip the ball up in the air and everybody flies to it and there it paid off. So we have 28 seconds to go and Wolverine, the Wolverines have the ball once again via the turnover the second turnover for Wisconsin the second interception. They're going to go Play for fake. something. He's got Kolasar wide open Kolasar good catch one of the best pair of hands of the Big Ten inside the 20 yard line. Well, everything working right for Michigan. First down play, he comes out, play action pass. Colazard does a great job of running down and then breaking over the middle. And a good pass that time, right on the money by Galloway. Excuse me, by Taylor. I think I said that a couple of times. <laughs> I keep looking for Galloway to run deep. <laughs> Very nice pass. Oh, yeah, he's wide open, right in the seam of that zone. 
and they're stopping the clock here. I think uh, they're going to either check where the ball was spotted or get a new ball. Get a new ball. Yeah, that one's been bad for the Badger defense. We you know it rained quite a bit this morning, and uh, the field is a little wet down there. It's not sloppy, but they're, it is wet down there, and so they're going to have to change the ball every play. Here you get a good look at the center, John Vitale. He said, hey, let's let the quarter run out. He's, He's only 6'1", 273. He's kind of a small. Yeah, he is. He really is line. small in person. I had the opportunity to interview him in Chicago. And that's the end of the first quarter. So after 15 minutes of play, the Badgers find themselves on the short end of a long first quarter, 21 to nothing. The result of the second interception by Tony Lowry have the ball in great field position again. Uh, you know, Bo has had a one and two start. That's uncharacteristic for him, as we said. But uh, he still feels he has what it takes to get to Pasadena come January. Well, you know, a one and two in the Big Ten doesn't mean a thing. He's zero zero in the Big Ten, and uh, he knows he's going to have a real fight in the Big Ten with Indiana playing well and Iowa supposedly a good team, Michigan State supposed. So Bo knows he's got to come out and get ready to play. And I think we said at the beginning, first play of the game, he's going to go after it. Here you see Lionel Crawford, the freshman quarterback out of Houston, Texas, and I have a feeling we will see him on the next series of plays for the Badger offense. Well, the coaches have said all week they're going to try to play both those quarterbacks, and they need something to happen, so there's no reason why they shouldn't put them in right now. So it's first and 10 on the 17-yard line. Colasar in motion. Straight up the middle, Leroy Horde out of New Orleans. And that's that little trap play that they scored the touchdown on her in the first quarter. They just give it to the fullback right up the middle using one of the guards to pull and do the trapping. Give the ball to Leroy. Michigan keeps you honest. They run right up the middle. They run off tackle. And like we saw in that first down situation, they'll throw the ball. That was only the first pass by Michael Taylor. Operating with two tight ends right now. I formation. Second and three split to the far side. Callaway. Pitch back to Bowles, flag flies, and uh, before the play really got underway, they throw the flag and they stop it. So one would think there might have been some movement within the line. Well, there's no question about everybody uh, that heard the whistle or whatever stopped right there. It looked like Bowles was going to be able to walk in the end zone, but that play will be called back with a five-yard penalty going to Michigan. Only the second penalty of the game. Bo Schimbeckler say, wait a minute now, wait a minute. What's that? you got to be kidding me. Now, no more split crews either. Bo can't complain about the split crews. He had some uh, harsh words to say about the officiating in the Miami-Michigan game, which, by the way, was played in Ann Arbor. But this is a solid Big Ten crew now. Well, Michigan driving right now in Bo's favorite end zone, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where the fans make all the noise, exactly. right? The first night game ever at Wisconsin, and he had a field day with quarterback Jim Harbaugh and Wisconsin's defense in the crowd that night. Second and eight now following the five-yard penalty. Little... Delay and Bowles, good job that time among those making the stop, Dan Batch, and at the bottom, Chad Vandezandy. And John Vandezak, all those people did a good job of getting off their blocks. That was the delayed draw play, and it looked like there was going to be a big hole there for the beginning of the play, but they did a good job of getting off their blocks and getting to the carrier. Bowles comes in, had an outstanding game last Saturday against Wake Forest. 33 carries for 213 yards on the ground. Third down and eight, so one might think a passing situation. Colasar to the near side, McMurtry to the far side. Michigan always likes to use their tight end on third down situations. All right. They got Bowles. If they want him over the middle, they go. Touchdown. Right there. The pass, perfect. And McMurtry gathered it in, got one foot in bounds. That's all you need in college. And it is now 27 to nothing. You just can't do it any better than that. Uh, it was just a down and in pattern at time, and he just threw the ball right on the money. That was Right there, two feet inbounds, touchdown. Watch this now. Good protection. He just slingshots it. McMurtry's first touchdown of the 88 season, and he had Brad Mayo beaten on the play. One-on-one -on -one coverage down there, and he just did a great job of throwing the ball in. Once again, Michigan taking advantage of a Wisconsin turnover. Well, that's two turnovers that have resulted in two touchdowns. The point after is up, and it's good. So with 13-20 remaining in the second quarter, it is now 28 to nothing. The Michigan faithful that are here, certainly happy about that. And 
Last year it was a nightmare during the daytime for Don Morton and company up in Ann Arbor. 42 to nothing at the half. Well, Michigan is headed in that same direction right now. 28 nothing. We got 13 minutes left in the second quarter. Well, Michigan just playing uh, good football on both ends of the field, offensively and defensively. And One of your uh, good friends there, John, isn't it? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> 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 dressed up for Halloween and we're only on the first of October here well he played in three Michigan games <laughs> <laughs> former alum at Michigan well you know you're a coach how do you try to keep things together it's 28 nothing now I mean you're down and, and uh, it's not looking good how do you try to hold your team together on the sideline oh uh, you've just got to keep your poise and get your people together and uh, you know personal pride and things like that all take apart right now uh, we've just got to start doing something and if one if the offense can't do it, then the defense has got to make something happen. But this is the time when coaches really got to work. They've got to get their players and keep them from sitting there with their heads between their legs. And it isn't easy. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, that's a tough eight ball to be behind, quite honestly. Especially against a team the caliber of Michigan. They don't let too many teams up off the mat when they've got them down 28 zip. Owens to the middle of the field. They need a big play here. Owens cuts around, buys some more running room. And up to about the 32-yard line, where for the first time this afternoon, Wisconsin has some good field position to work with. And for the first time this afternoon, number 13. Let's hope it's lucky. Number 13, Lionel Crawford comes in at quarterback. This is really a good job. He had a couple of good blocks in this, but good individual running, too. He made about three or four moves here, kept his feet going, looked for the opening. Good job. Well, sometimes you need a play by your special teams, whether it's the receiving team or even on the punt team to make a big play, make a big hit. Crawford, very good running the ball against Miami last week. Goes down the line. He's going to call his own number. Gets to the 40. Knocked out of bounds. Hit hard out of bounds. Some might say a little late by number 27. Veda Murray, who already has one interception this afternoon. But you just talked about it. Good running by Lionel Crawford out of Houston, Texas. Crawford's got the great speed, and it was very evident against Miami. When he got in the game, he made things happen as the quarterback running with the football. The big question is now, is he going to be able to put the ball in the, little, in the air a little bit to keep Michigan honest? He had seven carries, 31 yards against the Miami Hurricane defense, and that is an awesome defense. They have some tremendous speed on that defense, and Crawford a couple of times able to run away from some of that speed. So it's a first down for Lionel Crawford. Vincy Hartley split back behind the quarterback. Jokey the center. Straight ahead. About a four-yard pickup for Steve Vincy. He almost was able to get away from for 24. Tripped up on the play by Bobby Abrams. And had he been able to get away from Abrams, who knows? Nice little hole that time. Uh, just unfortunately, somebody will get an arm out there and knock him down. But one thing Crawford will do now is he'll open up the game a little bit. They've got to be leery about the outside, so they're opening dive plays and things like that should start working a little bit second and five that's a good situation for the offense good pickup on the first down Crawford and he is hit immediately by Mester Mester was in there almost as quick as a snap he Mester is only 6'3 244 the pros aren't sure he's gonna be a great prospect but he just gets off the ball so quick nobody can block him could you perhaps move him to a linebacker slot if he's got the speed, they certainly could. But, uh, you know, he's pretty small for a defensive lineman as far as the pros are concerned. Exactly. Here it is. I mean, he is Boom. in there. <laughs> it's like he knew what was coming. He played off of whatever block there was on him. A loss of three in the play. So now you've almost got to throw the ball. Third and eight. Peters to the near side. Williams to the far. Good protection for Crawford. Has time in and out of the hands. And it would have would not have been enough for the first down. He had good protection that time. He rolled to his left. And uh, he thought a little bit about running that time, but he did the right thing. He had to get the first down. He threw the ball a little high. Uh, but at least he threw the ball. That's one thing we're glad to see. That's a pretty good mustard on it. Just a little overthrown. So we see Hyman's in. And back deep for the Wolverines. Maybe time for another fake here, Coach? Well, Michigan's looking for it. They, they've had 10 men on every punt except this one. They've got... Four linebackers standing there. Fourth and eight. A high kick. Calling four. With a fair catch. Callaway. Bumble. Bumbled. But, but he, he recovered it. He made the fair catch, but before he really got set, the ball was in and out of his hands. 
It's a difference in the game. Uh, Michigan fumbles the ball there, and he's able to come up with it. And oh. Wisconsin needs something to happen like that. So the Wolverine offense getting some last-minute instructions from Bo Schimbeckler. He's got a, he's got a veteran staff too. Gary Moeller, his offensive coordinator, who has been the defensive coordinator for several years for Bo, former head coach of the Big Ten at Illinois, and he's just got a lot of people that have been there. They know they the know ins the and the system. outs of the system right. and the Big Ten to boot. So the Wolverines probably their worst field position of the game thus far inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. Here's Bowles. Has running room, gets into the secondary, look out. It's a foot race, Bowles and White. Who's going to win? It's going to be Bowles. 81-yard touchdown. Well, initially just great blocking and then uh, really a couple of missed tackles. I think we'll see it again. And uh, the defense is beginning to wear out there. Uh, I hate to say that here in the first half, but they are. There was a couple of good blocks at the point of attack that time, but after that it was just a foot race. We'll probably get a chance to see it again, and we'll see that Initially, he did have a couple of good blocks. Do we have to see it again? <laughs> Boy, that guy, is he over 200 yards yet? I mean, he got 81 there, he got 55. That's 130 some yards right there. My gosh. Bo, take him out. Take him out. Let him sit out for the rest of the game. Razor sharp. Yeah, Mike Gillette is in. He's, he's tired. His tongue is hanging out. It's up and it's good. 35 zip. We've got 11:29 remaining in the first half. Call off the dogs, Bo. Oh, watch this! In. It's going to be a little playoff right tackle. Give it to Bowles. The fullback and guard are going to lead him. And there you see, he got some really good blocks. Now watch. There's one miss tackle. That's two. two. And then that's a and foot then race. it's a foot race. White tries to get him. He had an angle on it, but there's just a lot of speed by Tony Bowles. He went for him. And missed on a shot. 178 yards. <laughs> That'll boost his carry, won't it? it? Certainly will. There it is. 178 yards, 11 rushes. Whoa. Uh, who needs Jamie Morris? Who needs Jamie Morris? He Here was... it is once more. Good blocks by the Garden fullback. Here you see, he opened the hole. And then just two missed tackles, and Bowles is gone. You know, that's textbook football. You can't ask for better execution. I mean, when a play is designed, you put it on the board, that's the way you expect it to happen if you're the offense. Well, you notice there's not a lot of red shirts in the picture, and that means that the other people, the, the guards and tackles on the opposite side, they were blocking their people and not turning them loose because there's not much pursuit there. Michigan just having a fine football game, and I think Wisconsin's defense is a little down early here in this first half after what's happened to them, seeing that the offense hasn't been able to move the ball. Well, there has been an appeal made by Mike Daly, defensive coordinator, if they can play with 13 men on the next possession. Mike Gillette, a busy man. He's only two more points to become the Wolves' second leading scorer, surpassing. Remember? And back deep, Owens again to the 20. And to about the 24-yard line. Wolverines did a fairly good job that time of closing down in on Fred Owens. And playing off the blockers. Uh, Michigan, a well-coached football team. They came, they stay in their lanes, and they play off the blocks and get to the football. Lionel Crawford will come back in at quarterback for Tony. He's huffing and puffing over there. He said, whew, had a busy first half. He only had 213 yards last Saturday. He's got 178 unofficially thus far. Well, anybody had any questions about whether Michigan was going to be ready for the Big Ten or not? I think that's been answered here in the first half. But they're going to be a team to be reckoned with, believe me. Oh, threatened to say, you guys don't play well, you walk back to Ann Arbor. That's a long walk. Perks in motion. Lionel Crawford, and he spun around, but not until he moves past the 30-yard line. Spun to the ground on the play by number 26 of the Wolverines, David Key. Crawford is a real triple option quarterback. He's got great speed and he has the feel for seeing in the opening. And that time, an arm just reached from behind and was able to pull him down. Otherwise, he's got about eight or nine more yards. You know, there's a uh, case in point. David Key, he's been in Bo's doghouse. In fact, he was in Bo's doghouse in the offseason. As a result, he did not get in their media guy. <laughs> Nothing on him. That's what happens when you get Bo's doghouse. Second and three, Crawford. Stopped and hit hard that time by Key. That'll get a good key. job. That That'll time. get Key out of Bo's doghouse, making a play like that along with Beta Murray. And it's a first down for the Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah, he did a good job that time, Key. There was a short side of the field. He was trying to play both the pitchback and the quarterback. 
did a good job. Scattered applause from the crowd here, applauding a first down. Take what you can get. No, believe me. First man through, Vincey up to the 40. Knocked down to the ground to about the 42-yard line. Ridden down by, among others, Bobby Abrams. So Vincey has about four to make it even seven or eight yards. Yeah, and that's the thing that's happened. Uh, when Crawford comes in this football game, some of the dive plays start to open up a little bit because they're worried about the quarterback. And that's the, the whole success of the veer option is your quarterback has got to put a threat on not the, only the outside but on the inside people also. Well, when you're also leading 35 nothing too, if you're the defense, your head's probably not in the game as much as it would be as if it's nothing, nothing. Inside, Marvin Artley has the first down. Well, Michigan gambled that time. They were in a veer slant defense that time, and they slanted to the wide side of the field. There was a big hole. Applause again, the crowd. Well, we're starting to get him into the game. <laughs> That's what we need. We need everything now. now. Do you think that they will let's throw out the first half and let them start from a new and just take off that 35. Well, I, I'm sure they'll do a lot of things like that, but one thing I think you're going to find is that they're going to make some adjustments to playing against Crawford. Michigan has yet to give up a point in their first three games in the third quarter this year. Crawford. Oh, maybe he should have pitched that time because Alex Marshall buried him. Little indecision that time, but uh, <laughs> he, he, I think he really wanted to cut up field, but a little concerned about going to his left and planting and slipping in that time. I think he wanted to pitch the ball, but good defensive action. If you if you get a chance, we get to see Lionel Crawford here. When he gets up, he's got 59 tattooed on his jersey because he stuck him. Really a fine tackle. He played off the blocker. So a loss of one second and 11. Perhaps a pass here. Burks to the far. Bester to the near. Goes down the line. Fumble. And I believe Crawford got on it. I think Crawford got on it. And there's a little indecision between the dive back and the quarterback who's supposed to take the ball. Now, in We've their first three before. games, yeah, they had problems at Miami with the mesh. When you hold the ball in there, whether you're indecided as to whether or not you're going to hold it in there or pull it back. And that was on the mesh there. And uh, that can be a problem when you're an option team. That's where you, you expect the fumbles. That's exactly right. Uh, even the great teams like Oklahoma and some of those teams, when they were were number one in the country. They were putting the ball on the ground because of the mesh problem. A great day, not only for the Badgers, but by the weather. Third down and 12. Crawford looking for a little time. Unloads, and it's on his own pass intended in the area of Marvin Artley. He was throwing more for his life than trying to find a receiver. He was trying to throw back across the game, and that's the toughest pass to throw. There was really nobody open. He rolled out to his right. He looked for receivers on his side. Nobody was open. And uh, I think the coaches will tell him not to throw that in the future. That's a dangerous pass when you go against across the field like that. He's only a freshman, remember. Tony Lowry's not a whole lot older. He's only a sophomore. Hyman's back for the Badgers, back for the Wolverines, Callaway. Good Michigan snap. Holding up here and they're not rushing. Nice kick this time by Hyman, driving Callaway back inside the 10 yard line. And a fumble. But Callaway falls on it again. He's had a lot of indecision the last two punts he's fielded. The ball is bouncing right for Michigan, believe me. Doesn't that make you sick when you're a head coach? <laughs> you know, you're down as it is, and then you see things like that. Oh, preaching again. He'll be preaching all afternoon long. He's not going to be very happy with that. The question whether the Man should have signaled for a fair catch to begin with, and then he didn't, and then fumbled the ball, and Bo's not going to like that at all. Michigan backed up now inside their five-yard line. Yeah, but remember what they did in the last possession, 81 yards, Tony Bowles on this one. He's back there again, too. They're going with two tight ends. He wants to get to 200 yards for the end of the first down. First man through is Leroy Horde, and Horde picks up maybe two yards. Well, that's just a belly series giving you the fullback uh, over the center that time and we'll, we'll think we'll see wings in there and a couple other good Wisconsin defenders move right to the ball. Coming in with a play from the sideline Greg Murtry one of the tight ends goes out and they got some big tight ends Brown man that goes to the sideline 6'4 248 Derek Walker he's only 6'2 but 246 
out of the eye. Tracy Williams is the eye back now. Williams gets the ball and the call, and Williams, they don't drop off a whole lot between Bowles and Williams, at least based upon what we saw from that play. And they're not dropping off up front. That's the, I watched the blocking that time. They, they went off the short side of the field where two blockers were, and they both blocked their men and gave them a good hold. Badger down, injured on the play. It might be Greg Thomas. Here it is again. And like you said, just the point of attack is where it's really made, John. Greg Thomas, the injured player for the Badger. He came in, uh, it's called a burner. What's that? I mean, you know. Well, that's just on your shoulder, and you, you get hit there, and it, it burns, it's numb, and you're in a lot of pain. It usually goes away maybe right. 25, 30 seconds, but it is painful, and it's, uh, it's disruptive to the player. It happens quite a few times when they make tackles. I talked with Greg after the Miami game. He got popped there one time, and so his whole right side was numb. I mean, you know, it's just, you have no feeling, no sensation there, and it's the left side. It appears that's what just what it might be, too. Hard-nosed player out of Keysport, Pennsylvania. Fine young man. Played very well last week against Miami. In fact, the entire secondary really did a good job last week against the Miami team. So Steve Wagner will come in to replace the injured Greg Thomas. The Wolverines aren't slowing down. They lead 35-0. They have the ball first and 10, starting deep in their own territory. They've advanced the ball now to the 26-yard line. They go for the split to the eye formation. And running room and then some running away from Wagner and finally being hauled down. Tracy Williams, two plays in a row, and Williams wants to get some more PT well, you playing time. You know, they hate to sit up here and be repetitious, but once again, there it is. It, on the right side of the offensive line, here you'll see it. They just do a great job. They get everybody blocked. The back really has nothing to worry about until he gets past the line of scrimmage. That was a major concern by Mike Daly, defensive coordinator. Just the inability of their defensive front to be able to handle the physicalness of Michigan's offensive front. We're going to take another look at it, but there you'll see it. Everybody's blocked. Look, look at Skrepnik. I mean, that guy's, he's huge. I mean, we're talking Mack Trucks here. Delay again. Williams this time. There was a blitz on, and back in the backfield was Pete Noka in among those to make the stop along with David Wings, and maybe that's what they're going to have to do. They're just going to have to gamble. Well, they gambled that time, and Batch was in there. There were three of them right there on the draw play, and couldn't get any yardage on that. In fact, they lost some yardage, a loss of one. The trouble with Michigan is you, you realize you've got to gamble, and they probably do when you're down 35 to nothing, but you got to be so careful because they are not a predictable team and they'll come up and they see your gamble and they'll do a little gambling on their own. Well the Badgers are going to gamble a little bit. They go with a nickel system here. They expect the pass. Taylor gets some pressure runs away from the pressure finally unloads. Threw it to the turf. Kolasar was covered pretty closely on the play by Lamar White. So credit was Wisconsin secondary for doing a nice job of keeping their people covered. Oh they really did. They blanketed the whole field that time with defensive backs and they were able to keep every Michigan receiver covered. Good job that time. So that sets up a third and 11 for the Wolverine offense. They haven't been faced with too many third and long situations. Uh, the scoreboard would indicate that when it's 35 nothing. And the big time today early in the first quarter when they were faced with a third and long they came up with a completed pass that got them out of a lot of trouble and got them down in there. 100 years of football. It seems like 100 years for the Badgers down on the field right now. Three Taylor. man rush over the middle. Boy, was McMurtry wide open and Taylor delivered. There was a late flag back in the backfield. Might be a late hit on Taylor. I'll have to wait for the call. Well, that's Holding. Gonna, no, it's going to be against the Wolverines. So a break for the Badger well, defense. They, they need one. <laughs> Good protection that time. They ran a deep pattern. Uh, Wisconsin had plenty of people in the area, but he was able to, the receiver just did a nice turn in. And of course, Taylor throwing the ball extremely well. Holding the call. And a major break for the Badger defense because they had the first down and then some. Kolasar will come in. So they'll move them 10 yards back. So it sets up a third and 21. Against Michigan for holding. Two receivers put to the near side. Kolasar one, and I can't get the number on the other. I think it's McMurtry. Yes, it is. Little play fake. Taylor, and he's going to run with it, which he's a very dangerous runner. 
He picks up about eight yards, but he'll be short, and Gillette will come in, so credit the Badgers defense for good doing job a good that job. Time. They only rushed three people. They dropped people, eight people off, and well, Taylor couldn't find anybody to go to, so he ran the draw up the middle, but Wisconsin reacted well, came up and stopped them way short of the first down. Scott Bester will be back to receive the punt from Mike Gillette. Coming in, Gillette averaging just over 45 a boot, which was good for first place in the Big Ten through the first three games, and that's fourth best in the country. A line drive punt, Bester on the run, makes the catch, tries to get to the sideline, does, out of bounds, stops the clock, 4.58 to go, and Wisconsin's offense comes back out onto the field, and I'm sure that Don Wharton would love to see them get six before they go on into half. Well, I'm sure he would do. Bester did a good job that time. He didn't have any blockers, so he just took the ball and ran as far as he could and then got out of bounds. Here you see some of the front. Raps, Magazzini, Jokey, Peterson. Crawford will be the quarterback again. We haven't really had a chance to see any of the other tandem in the backfield for Wisconsin. There had been talk that Don Wharton would be considering using some of his freshman running backs, among them Jimmy Henderson and Damone Freeman. Pass, David Birch will slant pattern up to the 30-yard line. Nice pickup, good throw by Crawford. I believe that's the first completion of his Badger career. That's a quick little look-in pass that time, and that's what he needs is to be able to complete some passes, get a little confidence in his passing game. Here you see David Burke's numbers for 1988. Bester checks out. Bill Williams comes in to play from the sideline. Under four and a half minutes, 35 to nothing. Michigan. Second and one following the nine-yard gain to David Burks. Tied in Brian Anderson to the far side. Crawford, and I don't know if he got the first down or not. It will depend on where they spot it. It's going to be close. Uh, they ran the option going left, and he took a step there and planted to go upfield. I don't think he was able to really get the surge he wanted to, and that's going to be very close to the first down. Alex Marshall in to make the stop, and we've called Marshall's number several times. Uh, an active player for the Wolverines on defense, 87 red shirt. Well, Badgers just substituted another tight end. Uh, well, I doubt very much whether they think they got the first down, <laughs> although they're going to measure anyway. Well, the official's not in the game here either. Oh, they do have the first down. Yeah, Wisconsin didn't think they had it. I think they put in another two tight ends. We'll see if they make another substitution. There we go. Sean Peters will check in now. Which tight end will check out? Will it be Chris or Anderson? It's going to be Bester. So first and ten, under four minutes and counting here in the first half. Wisconsin trying to get something going offensively. Michigan stays in their same defensive front. Five men on the line, two linebackers. Crawford rolls to the near side. Good block by Nelson. Runs out of bounds. Good play. Oh, that's going to be a great play for Crawford. I know we're going to see a lot more of that. That's a little bootleg action with him coming out on the corner. It stops all that pursuit. He comes out. If the receivers are covered, then he'll just take the ball and run up the field. Nice little play there by Lionel Crawford and Brian Anderson slapping high fives. You know, he's a freshman. He's enthusiastic. And let's face it, when you're down 35 zip, you need some enthusiasm out there. Well, there's no question. And he needs to be a little enthusiastic, too. He's got to feel that he's really moving the ball here and doing a good job for him. Get well, some he, confidence. He picked up five yards to add to his rushing totals thus far here in the first half. Hartley Vincey, the tandem. Little mix up there. Vincey trying to turn the corner, but. Not allowing him is that Michigan stretched it out, and that's what will really hurt the Vera offense. If the defense is allows to stretch it out, stretch it out, and make you make a late decision, then they'll all get over there and get in the pursuit. Trip Wellborn made the stop for the Wolverines, coming up from out of the secondary. Third and five now. Clock winding down to the three-minute mark. Wisconsin continue to use two tight ends, and that really neutralized Michigan's slant defense. That's what they're trying to do right now. Make them play it honest. Crawford goes to the far side, and an errant pitch. And fortunately for Wisconsin, it goes sailing out of bounds. Pitch was to Steve Vincey, and Crawford let him just a little bit too much. And Vincey just trying to run the ball down, and it went out of bounds. So a break for Wisconsin to avoid another potential turnover there. That will bring up a fourth down situation. 
the yeah. busy man today is back on the field. <laughs> Hyman's back again. He had 11 punts last Saturday at Miami, tying a school record. He's well on his way to matching that. And we're not even in the second half yet. Michigan backs two off. Back this time, John Colasar, 19 yard average on kickoff returns, but he's hit. Got three for 21 yards, and not a good kick this time by Hyman. A short kick and a line short driver. Bounce. And no good bounce either. They'll take over at about their 34 yard line. It's been a problem area for Don Morton. Between Brad Brecky, a backup quarterback, and Chris Hyman's. Of course, when you have a guy the caliber of a Scott Sapicki for the last four years, you go to your walk on program and hopes that they can produce somebody or someone that will step forward to take that job. People just don't realize how important the kicking game is to football. I mean, uh, all aspects of it. Uh, but if you don't have a good kicker, that puts a lot of pressure on a lot of different areas of your football program. This is the opening weekend in the Big Ten. There you see the slate, the other games. This afternoon, a lot of eyes on the Iowa-Michigan State game. Been a rough fall for the Hawkeyes, too. Bo's going into his uh, two and three deep. This time, the running back, Alan Jefferson. Well, Third leading rusher a year ago, even though he missed six games. That's his power sweep play. He pulls both the guard and tackle, and they're going to go off right tackle or off right end, depending on where the hole is. And that's just power football. And right now, it appears to me that Bo's just going to try to slam it right at you. Thanks. I needed that, right? <laughs> Uh, he wants pulled. to keep the intensity up. He doesn't want to lose this thing here in the first half. Believe me. Especially when you consider they got Michigan State. Next Saturday, Demetrius Brown in at quarterback. The man in motion, Callaway. Leroy Horde has the ball and got a lot of running room. Once again, you'll find wings right in there. Did a good job of slipping off the block and moving in. Getting a piece of the tackle along with Melvin Hunter. You know, the assignments do not get any easier for the Badgers. They go on the road at Iowa next Saturday. That's no picnic place to play. So it's third down and five for Demetrius Brown, the quarterback. So Bo has pulled a lot of his first string people, at least in terms of running backs and receivers. Brown, who threw 16 interceptions last year, finds McMurtry wide open to the middle of the field, and it'll be a first down for the Michigan offense. Well, Demetrius, a uh, left-handed thrower, and that pattern was open before. He sent their split receiver down, and he breaks over the middle. Greg McMurtry, he's open. He had some scholastic problems this year. At first, it was thought he was going to be scholastically ineligible, and then he came back, and there it was. Well-thrown pass, and McMurtry just hauled it in. Michigan doing a good job of running deep patterns and keeping the linebackers out of being in the way. Out of Miami, Florida. How in the world did they get him out of Miami, Florida to Ann Arbor? Another guy they got from Florida, Anthony Carter. Straight ahead handoff, trying to get to the outside is Allen Jefferson. A very good tackle by Lamar White on the play, preventing him from advancing that into a big play. Well, actually, what Wisconsin did was they really stretched that out. They forced Michigan to go way to the outside. And Michigan, with 43 seconds, is going to take a timeout here. Uh, I really don't blame Boy. He wants to keep the intensity going here, and I think he'd like to see him get it in the end zone one more time. Well, he's got an ample, ample time to try to go for six, but then if he doesn't get six, I'm sure he might settle for three. See what Gillette can do, because you never know. As the season wears along, you get to this situation before the end of the half or even the ball game. You see how your special teams can play under a pressure type situation. You know, this is an important time, especially like for Schumbecker. He, he doesn't want the team to go into halftime thinking this thing's all over and blah, blah, blah. Because what happens is you start getting players hurt. They lose their intensity. And Bo's been around long enough to know that that's the last thing he wants to have happen. So he's going to keep the pressure on those Michigan guys right now. In this long series between these two schools, in games at Madison, the Wolverines are 16, 2, and 1. That's that's kind of scary when you stop and you think about that. Some of those belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> I never enjoyed the relish opportunity to beat them. Now it's only happened a few well, times. So second and seven from the 36 yard line 43 seconds to go in the first half the Wolverines with the ball and the lead at 35 to nothing. 
Jefferson is the tailback. Now they move from the eye. Wisconsin showing blitz. Here comes an audible. They check off. They go over the middle. Kolasar has it. Kolasar inside the 20-yard line, down to about the 16. A nice job by Demetrius Brown of checking off, reading the blitz, and then making the play. And you can see that's a specially designed play for Wisconsin's blitz. You saw the tailback move up and sit right in the hole between the guard and center, waiting for the linebacker. They've worked on that. There it is. He has good protection. Man-to-man -man coverage. All he's looking for is somebody to break across the middle. And knocked down by Raphael Robinson. Brown back to pass again over the middle and touchdown to the tight end. Just came right straight off his mark at the tight end spot. Looked to the inside. He had three receivers in the end zone. He just had to pick out the open man. Derek Walker Derek gathered Walker. it in. His first touchdown for 1988. His first career touchdown came in 1987 against Wisconsin. I've seen that pattern so many times by Michigan. They send three men down the field. They all do a turn in. All three of them in the end zone, and the quarterback's just got to pick out the open man. We talked about history repeating itself. Look at the score. 16 seconds to go. If Gillette converts the point after, it's 42 to nothing. The same score as at Ann Arbor a year ago, and by golly, it's happened. Michigan that time, and that's just what I thought Bo was going to do. He's not going to let up. Good protection here. He's just looking to see which man's going to be open. And it is nice a fine catch. catch. Oh, it really is a fine catch. And he really catch. took a shot from Lamar White and then Pete Noka. He was kind of doubled back over. And you got to credit Walker for making the reception and then hanging on after he made the reception. Ouch. Let's take that off the screen. Thank you. One thing I think you're witnessing, you know that Michigan's got some very fine athletes. Uh, well, you know, they're three points away or four points away from being 3-0 and oh and ranked number one in the country. Right. I mean, let's face it here. They lose uh, on a, uh, a field goal late in the game at Notre Dame. That's no picnic to play. And then they, they have Miami Perry in Miami with their great skill and, and whatnot. Can come back to win 31-30. And they beat Wake Forest. They go through the motions to beat Wake, to beat Wake Forest. Uh, you know. Hey, Sporting News picked Michigan to be the number one team in the country. They must have known something. I mean, they, we've seen evidence of it here this afternoon. They are. They can be good. There's no question about that. You've got a different kicker right now. And Vincent will feel the ball, and he's going to be stood up. Good coverage. The Michigan specialty teams are really doing an excellent job of coming down and covering kickoffs. J.D. Carlson. 12 seconds remaining here in the halftime, and I'm well, sure both coaches want to get their teams in the locker room right now. Here's my special play. Special six-pointer on two. Ready? Great. There it is. Statue of Liberty. You have your end come around behind Lionel Crawford. You take the ball off his hand. Then you pitch it back to Crawford. The guy that comes around for the Statue of Liberty, Merckx goes down the field, and he gathers it in for six. What do you want to bet we see a running play? Oh, you're going to see a pass. Crawford running, running, gets away from one, gets away from another. <laughs> Grant Tarkenton could have never done it any better. Oh, did a great job. Got away from two tacklers, got up the field, and that should end the half. That does end the half. End of the half. So at the end of the first two quarters of play, Wisconsin down 42 to nothing. Ouch. Could best describe it. Michigan 42, Wisconsin nothing. Of course, the big perpetrator in that first half, Tony Bowles, number 42, nine carries, 177 yards, three touchdowns, and here's the big one, 81 yards. Just beautiful execution on this. Well, it certainly is, and you're tired of seeing it. It looks like one play after the other, but they're getting great blocking up front, and then, of course, with that speed, he's just able to run away from the defenders. He ran away from Lamar White. Lamar White was helped off the field at the end of the first half. We don't know the extent of the injury there. But there you see the numbers on Bowles, and we might see him ever so briefly in the third period of play, and then after that, he might be done for the afternoon. The numbers reflect the first half score of 42 to nothing. First downs, the Badgers had only five first downs versus 13 for the Michigan Wolverines. Passing, seven of eight, one of six for the Badgers, 138 yards through the air, only nine for Wisconsin. Rushing, look at that, 272 yards on the ground versus 60 
turnovers. The two turnovers the Badgers had, two interceptions, led to two touchdowns for the Wolverines. And penalties, uh, three for 20 yards against the Wolverines. Total yardage, it's as painful as the scoreboard is. 412 yards for Michigan, 69 for the Badgers. Possession time, rather e equal, 1534 versus 1426. But uh, that doesn't mean much in no. these stats. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the only one that's somewhat misleading because the Badgers had the ball for a long time, but they weren't able to do anything with it. Now, one Michigan drive took nine seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly the kind of ball control you want. When you get six points out of it, who's going to argue? Well, Michigan's going to receive here to start the second half. Uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Morton had a lot to say in the locker room, and they're probably going to make some adjustments, do some things a little different just to try to stay in this football game if they can get back in with some scores. Rob Merring will kick off. That's the first opportunity. He's had to put his foot to the ball, and it is his foot. A barefoot walk-on kicker out of West Bend. Of course, he has replaced freshman Rich Thompson from Sky 2, Oklahoma, who was out because of a lacerated ulcer. He has been redshirted. We'll see him in 19. 89 back deep for the Wolverines number 40 Colasar and number 28 Allen Jefferson so let's hope the first half or the second half is a lot better than the first half was for Wisconsin any kind of production will be better than what we saw in the first half a high kick not a deep one and it bounces around finally Colasar the nine yard line and he has stopped just short of the 35 or the 25 yard line well, that ball was kicked very high. It wasn't kicked very long. Uh, Michigan had a little trouble fielding. As a result, they weren't able to get a decent return out of it. Victor Fortino made the stop for the Wisconsin special teams. We'll wait and see who will be the quarterback. Well, it's going to be Michael Taylor. He's back in at quarterback. He had a splendid first down. Seven of eight. Or four or five passing. One touchdown. And off to the tailback with a 36, Tracy Williams. So That's we can only assume that uh, Bowles might have uh, called it a day. That's the same play they opened the game up with. Just a little play going off a right tackle that time. And uh, they have the fullback lead them. That was only a 55-yard gain, as I recall, for touchdown. Bowles also had an 81 yard or two. Second down and three. It picks up seven yards. Uh, you go to the well so many times because that play has worked for about as long as Bo has been on the sidelines. In motion, Colasar. Williams has it again, and Williams has stopped this time. Is that Malvin Hunter, the first man in? I think it was a good penetration. He read that play well and came up and met the fullback right in the hole, and that's what you got to do to stop that eye lead play. Malvin Hunter, the 6'3", 220-pound sophomore out of Harvey, Illinois. There you see the numbers on Taylor in the first half, four or five passing. Well, they had their way in the whole first half. They were able to throw the ball whenever they wanted to, and they weren't in a lot of trouble. Third and three, split backfield here for Michigan. Wide split two. Out of the backfield, and it's a first down for receiver Tracy Williams. That's he was Kistling hit with a really fine tackle. He was hit by Kissling as soon as he caught it, but. Well, he that's had the their, first down. That's their possession type pass. They line up and split backs and sent both back, backs out of the backfield and into the flat. Good protection up front gave him plenty of time to look for the open man. You know, in the past 19 years at Michigan, Bo has won the third most regular season games of every team in the country. Ranks fourth in the nation when winning percentage is considered. First and ten for the Wolverines from their own 37. Some movement there. Flags fly might be offside against Wisconsin, or then again, they might have called that he was drawn offside, but let's wait for the officials to call it. Wisconsin, a little stunt defense at the time. They were trying to slant to the right, and I think the man over the center, the nose guard, uh, will be called for offside. Offsides, it was against John Banasak. He jumped a little prematurely. You're, when you're down like this, everyone's trying to make a big play. You know, everyone's trying to do something a little extra so they can maybe make something happen and it's a little over eagerness right there that's the word I was looking for over eagerness 
Running over to the sideline. Jeff Brown is tied in. He was replaced by Derek Walker with a play call. It's first and five following the five yard penalty. Callaway in motion. Bootleg. Bootleg. And they find the man in motion. Callaway, he goes to the near sideline. Eddie Fletcher is in the secondary for Wisconsin. Well, that's a good play for Michigan. They fake to the tailback and then come rolling out. They send the fullback forward in the short flat and send the deep man about 12 yards down the field, and then he breaks out. Well-conceived play right there. Little play fake one way, kind of a misdirection to get the defense moving in the wrong direction. And they have had receivers open just all day long. Yeah, Callaway was wide open that time, so was Horde. Here you see Callaway, his numbers. First and ten in Wisconsin territory. And here's another big hole and filling it and then running past it. 36, Tracy Williams. Well, the only man that was able to come over was Wings, and he was from the opposite side. He just made an arm tackle, but once again at the point of attack, everybody blocked. Williams had a very productive first half. The backup for Bold. Four carries, 52 yards. He adds to it with this play. He ran in and out of the hands of Wings. Michigan offensive line, they're blocking fullback, just having an outstanding day so far. They're doing everything just right. Michigan coming in 685 victories, the most in any other Division I school. Notre Dame second with 6-6. Out of the eye, second and one. Williams. Pretty good pursuit by Dan Kissling, but then Williams just went right by him, advancing the ball down to about the 11-yard line. Penalty flag, though. They might have a clip or a hold that time. Fullback did an excellent forward, did an excellent job of blocking the defensive end. There is another injured Badger down on the field, and I think it might be Don Davey. That's the last thing Wisconsin can afford to have happen. It is Don Davey. I'm pretty sure that's the man that Hort came down and blocked. He threw a fine body block. Here you'll see it. Yeah, he was down right there. And there you see the, the tail end of the play. You see the flag that goes. It's a holding call against Michigan. Davey was banged up from the Miami game, and he had an outstanding game. An interception there. Really played well. And he's played well this fall. He gets up and he will be helped off the field by head trainer Denny Hellwood. Jeff Wolf comes in to replace him. So that's three players that have been hurt so far this afternoon. Greg Thomas, Lamar White, now Don Davey. Michigan with split backs now. Look for a pass or draw here. Colasar in motion to the far side. And pressure being applied in the form of Noka. A little screen play intending the pass for Williams. Noka did a good job. He was boring down and bearing down in on Michael Taylor, perhaps forcing him to get rid of the ball a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Well, I think he did. Uh, Michigan certainly had the right play call that time with the blitz coming. But as you see, Noka was able to get in there and hit him just before he wanted to throw the football. Good time to call a screen that time. Noka did a good job of cutting in and get penetration. Brings up a third and ten. Incomplete pass stops the clock. 11:50 in the third quarter. Ball just inside the 40-yard line. Taylor straight drop back. Has time. Now runs away from the pressure. And he has the first down. Good running by Taylor. There's a fumble and who picks up? Falls on it. Derek Walker. So whenever there's been something bad. Conversely, something good has happened for the Wolverines. It's, that's why it's 42 to nothing. Well, credit Taylor there with an outstanding play. His people were covered. He just did a good job of getting up the field and turning a big loss into a, probably a first down. Well, he felt the pressure, and then he's got the athletic ability and the speed to run away from the pressure. Wolf applying it. He says, hey, I'm just going to run it now. Picks up some blockers, runs away from some people. Hit hard by Batch. Not before he got the first down. They spotted the 26, first and 10. Williams the eye back. He gets the call. And there's another giant hole. Runs away from Kissling. Runs away from Fletcher. Inside the 10-yard line. He almost ran into the end zone. 
Well, that was good running that time by Williams. He just waited to see the play develop. He waited to see which way his offensive line was going to take the defensive people. And here you'll see it. They just take them all down, so he breaks to the outside. There it is. Well, Nobody look, touches him. Looked like there might have been a little holding there. Wings uh, inside wings. the line. Van der Zandy was being held from behind. <laughs> He has the Florida prep scoring record for one season. He scored 124 points per season. Two tight ends for Michigan. I formation. Here's Williams again. Another big hole. He meets David Wings head on, but then Mott moves by Wings inside the five and look for the bone here, the wishbone perhaps. I tell you, Leroy Hoard is just playing an outstanding football game. He's not carrying the ball a lot, but. He's making a key block on almost every single play. Look at this unofficially nine carries 90 yards. Bowles is seated over on Bo's bench. He's had quite an afternoon. 177 yards three touchdowns. And they're going to run out of the eye. Jefferson is the eye back. And now they're finally going to give it. The horde has been doing all that blocking. That only stands to, to be the way to go, right? Well, they've run that trap uh, with the fullback up the middle about four times, and it's been successful every time for at least five yards. Here you see Skrepinik. You get an idea of how big he is. He's only a sophomore, 6'8", 322 pounds. Not fair. He started in high school <laughs> football at age 13, and that's scary. Third and two. Third and two, third goal, however you want to call it. Here it is, the wishbone. Gotta watch the option series here. The full house backfield, Taylor, options, touchdown. Michael Taylor gets the score. It's his favorite play, and when he wants the third down, fourth down situation, is just to run that option play and take the daylight. Michael Taylor with his fourth touchdown this fall, and the Wolverines continue to pour it on here. A good drive, possession type. Well, it certainly was. There you see him on the option. He strings it out as far as he can. He sees that he can get in the end zone. So instead of pitching the ball, he just leans upfield and gets across the goal line. Gillette trying to move past Tom Harmon. Snap. And did he miss it? I think he did. He missed it to the left. Now that's what happens when you get a little active. Gillette, only the third miss in his career at Michigan. Well, you're right. He just hurried that a little bit, and actually sidewinded it and kind of kicked it off the side of his foot. That bow, oh, that's incurred Bo's wrath. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Son, I could still pull your scholarship away. He just missed it. Well, that's the biggest ovation of the crowd today. The ball went to the stands and then up over the top. So whoever had nine of the pool is not too happy. <laughs> Very impressive drive by Michigan. If there's any question about whether they were going to come out ready to play the second half, that answered it. And I just know what Bo did in the locker room. He, he's going to make those guys come out in this second half and play. He's not going to put his regulars on the bench. He put a couple of them on there, but he wants them to come out here ready to play. And now I think we'll begin to see him start substituting pretty freely. Exactly. You know, he wants to get his ball club ready now. I mean, let's face it, this ball game is well in hand. He wants to get him ready for Michigan State next Saturday. And that one is at Ann Arbor. They could sell 200,000 seats to that. I'm sure of that. Then I'm going to let Gillette kick off. Owens at the eight yard line trying to get to the middle now trying to go to the outside and Eric could, Bush. He couldn't get there because Mr. Bush was there to chop him down. And Eric is listed as a quarterback. He is. Michigan's using him on the special teams. He has since been moved to second. Really, he has. Oh, he has, has he? been moved to the second. Okay. <laughs> well, he can only play six or only bring 60 players on a road. Now Lionel Crawford back in a quarterback. He had a good first half in terms of running the ball. Looking to pass this time. He's going to tuck it under, trying to run away. And whoa, was he level? Certainly was. Eric Anderson, outside linebacker, just came in and really put the touch to him. Glenview, Illinois, a red shirt, 87. Crawford, prior to that carry, had 
131 yards on 10 carries in the first half. There you see the scoring drive. Cover 536, 66 yards, capped off on a two-yard touchdown run by Taylor. A little confusion there. Crawford's going to call a timeout. I think he's not sure of the play they wanted to call. He's going to have a good learning experience today. Uh, he's finding out that some people can move pretty quick, and he's going to have to make some decisions just a little bit quicker. But it is a good experience for him. Until you look at the scoreboard. University of Wisconsin would like to welcome the 400 members of the Baptist Hill Society. This group of university benefactors. A lot of people figure in Michigan to have a legitimate shot at the Big Ten championship while well, coming in the 1988 Big Ten season. They lead with 32 shared or outright crowns. Ohio State is second with 25. This is not the only time that Bo has come in with a one and two record. Only other two other occasions, uh, Michigan teams have started one and two under Bo, 1980 and 82. Wisconsin, they do not get any easier. They go to Iowa next Saturday. Of course, things have not been just rosy in Iowa City oh, this no. fall. It's been a rough year for the Big Ten in terms of their starts. Second and 12, Peters. In motion, Crawford, straight drop back, runs away for the pressure, and then he's driven down hard from behind. Brent White made the stop. Well, the difficult thing now is that Michigan kind of knows they got to throw the football, and they're using play-action plays, and it just takes a little bit longer. And as a result, Crawford's not going to have time to set up. Uh, Michigan putting a lot of pressure on him. So that sets up a third and ten, gain of two. Williams to the near side. Peters in the slot. Delay to Marvin Artley and too much penetration. That was going to be the draw play. Uh, number 91 from Michigan. Uh, Mike Teeter was in there and really lost it up. Otherwise, it might have been a good play. It's talking about the Big Ten and its non-conference. The 11 victories against non-conference opposition. The fewest number of wins. Since 1982, when they were 8 and 14, the conference finished with a winning percentage of under 500. Hyman's back into punt. Kolosar deep. Good snap. Good kick. Kolosar running under it. And did he touch the ball? It goes out of bounds. Doesn't make any difference. <laughs> boy, oh boy. When it rains, I'll tell you, the course. penalty might be on Wisconsin, not giving him the opportunity to catch the football. I'm not sure, but. He was running to try to get it. Right. Now, in the opinion and the judgment of the official, were they in the way? Were they impeding his progress to try to catch the ball? That's it. That's it. Well, got to give him the opportunity to catch the football. Here you'll see it. See, right there, he had no chance to catch the ball. Even if it had hit him and stayed in bounds, it would end up being a penalty. Victor Fortino was the guy that was moving in on him. That's a mental mistake. Yeah, it's good hustle. You just got to learn to break down when you get about four or five yards away from the man and get ready to hit him when he catches it. Demetrius Brown will be the quarterback for Bo. And judging by the uniforms, it looks like he's going to go with the second string people. Mark Ramirez is the center. A red shirt in 86. Peter is a wrestler at Michigan, compiling a 21 and one mark as a heavyweight. Then decided to trade on football, and there is a fumble on the play. That was and just an exchange between the quarterback and the center. The ball bounced right down to the ground. You're going to have that. You got a new tandem there between Brown and Ramirez. But Michigan fell on. They found a lot of four-leaf clovers here, at Camp Randall Stadium this afternoon. It Michigan starts bouncing right. It bounces right. That's. Old expression. It's usually with the team that's leading 48 to nothing. Too. Yeah. No question about that. Jokish. Split in, split two. The near side on the hash mark there. Out of the eye. Jefferson. And he's met there by David Wings right at the 40 yard line. So that sets up a third down situation. Third and six. Wings is really doing a good job, you know. He's on the other side of the field when that play starts, and he's the linebacker coming across the green, coming through the center, and make the block, make the tackle. 
Davy checks out. He might have been shaken up again. Jokish on the near side. Callaway in the slot. Third and six. Demetrius Brown blitz by Noka to Jokish. Jokish has the first down. If that name sounds familiar, well, it should. His brother Paul played football and basketball at Michigan. And Dan, the younger Jokish, 6'7", 215 pounds. His brother was about 6'8". Tall hey, family. Demetrius Brown looked very good throwing the football. Would you like to have this as your number two quarterback, huh? Nice luxury to have. That was a timing pattern. He just threw that right on the button. First and 10 for the Wolverines. They're inside the 30 yard line. Call it to 29. And you know these guys the, the number two team. They're eager. They want to play. They want to get some playing time. They want to impress Malvin Hunter. Good job that time. He just smelled out the play and made it single handedly. Well, he got rid of his block and that time. That's what we've needed all game long. He got rid of his block got over there in the hole and didn't give the back a chance to get into the backfield. You see it right here. Steps up off the block and makes the tackle. The loss of one of the plays, second and 11, approaching the five minute mark of the third period. <laughs> Jefferson, the eye back. Jefferson gets the call. He's tripped up by Leon Johnson. Leon Johnson got good penetration that time. That was a play designed to go to the outside. He never had a chance. Got tripped up right at before he got to the line of scrimmage. Now keeping in mind that these are the second and third stringers for the Wolverines. They haven't played a lot probably in the first three games. They have not had the opportunity. Normally a lot of times Michigan blows people away in the first three. That has not been the case this fall for Bo Schembechler and company. Third and 14 following the loss of three. Play fake over the middle and it's been there all day long. Jeff Wagner there to clean up as the pass was intended for Jokish or check that the pass intended not for Jokish. Number 34 for the Wolverines. Eric Trope was the intended receiver. Wisconsin had a blitz on that time. They brought eight people. It was man-to-man -man coverage. Good coverage by the secondary. Brown had a good chance to throw it in there. We get a little field goal here. An attempt from the 40-yard line. That'll make it a 50-yard field goal. A 50-yard attempt by Gulam Khan. Kick is up, and it's woefully short. Quite a bit short. He had it up high in the air, but it did, just didn't have the distance. <laughs> Coulomb Khan from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Must be their long field goal kicker. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the wave is, is the wave trying to make its presence known here at Camp Randall State. The sun is almost trying to break out here. It's been a dull and dreary day in Madison. Started by raining this morning. Rain right up until just before the kickoff. It's been raining on the Badgers ever since. Hartley. Marvin Hartley gets into the secondary. Tries to find some more running room. Advancing the ball up to about the 40 yard line. Pick up of seven yards. It's about the second time today that there's been a good hole up the middle. Otherwise Michigan has really shut it down. This is a cutback play. You'll see he'll take it there. Break back to his right. Finds a good hole. It's a good blocking that time up front by the Wisconsin offensive line. You said that's the way they started off initially. Uh, they got some good running room from Marvin Hartley. And then he was never heard from after that. Down the line. Hartley has the first down. Advancing to about the 48 yard line for Wisconsin. Once again, they got some good blocks. So there was just a slant beer play going off left tackle. Give him a little daylight and he can get some yardage. Hartley had only four carries in the first half. Crawford had 10. So a lot of times it was just three downs and a punt, three downs and a punt. Hyman's had six punts in the first half. Crawford, straight drop back over the middle. Caught by David Burks. Burks inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 33-yard line. Lionel Crawford 
Looked good on the straight drop back there. He had time. He found the open man and got it to Burks. Oh, that's got to help his confidence. You know, that's the first real pass that he's thrown. He's thrown a little dump pass, but this is the first one where he had a set up and throw. He did a good job. So it's first and 10 for the Badgers from the Michigan 33. They haven't been this deep all day long. Vincy Hartley, the tandem in the backfield. Crawford trying to get to the outside, and he is stopped. They had the play strung out very nicely there. Well, they tried running into the short side of the field, and Joe Holland, I think, an outside linebacker, was able to keep penetration and move down the line of scrimmage. There you see Don Davey getting some new tape on his left ankle. So let's hope that we'll see Mr. Davey in the remainder of the ball game. Second and ten following the no gain on the carry by Crawford. Inside Marvin Hartley inside the 30 yard line just kind of picking his way that time he didn't have a big hole but he did a good job of reading the block was able to pick up a couple extra yardage. Third and six so one might expect to see a passing play here. See Don Wharton, you wouldn't know by looking at him that he was 48 points down. Well, he's trying to get the best he can right now and see if they can't get something on the board. Inside, Vincy, and he's going to be stopped at about the 25 yard line. I would imagine we'll see them go for it here. Good play that time. Michigan was in their slant defense and they ran right at the slant, broke the ball back inside of it. Sean Peters will check in with a play from the sideline. Fourth and a long two. Continues to go with two tight ends, and what that does, it really cuts down on the slants that Michigan likes to use. Forcing them to play a little more straight up. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Crawford has the first down into the secondary. Good job by Lionel Crawford. Just good elusiveness. Got him that extra yard that he needed. And then he did the rest all on his own. Well, he knows it. He feels it. Uh, he's a good option quarterback. He knows where there's daylight. And he's able to make those little moves. Here you'll see it. He comes down the line. And then he knows what he has to do. Just gets outside the block. Boom. Cuts it up. He's been running the option since he was in seventh grade. Like you say, he knows what he wants to do. He's got to have feel for the offense. First and ten, so the Badgers can't get a first down without getting a touchdown. Hartley, first man through. Hartley explodes. Touchdown. Oh, great run by Hartley. He broke about three tackles that time. Just kept his feet going, kept his shoulders loaded, lowered, and went in the end zone. A good tackle-breaking run that time by Marvin Hartley. He could have been stopped right initially at the line of scrimmage. Good job this time. There you see him. He busted two tackles right at the line of scrimmage and then got hit about three more times as he dove into the end zone. So with 28 seconds to go in the third period, the Badgers are on the board and to attempt the point after Rob Merring. Kick is up. And it's good. So the Badgers score with 28 seconds to go at the Late stages of the third period, it's now 48 to 7, and you got to feel happy for Lionel Crawford. He engineered that that drive. Well, that's important for him too. Uh, he gets a little confidence. He got one big pass out of that drive, uh, got him a first down. So every second he's in there, he's going to just get a little better, I'm sure. You know, I'm I'm a gambler, not a successful one uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe try an onside kick here. Well, this would be a good time to do it. I mean, if you're if you've got one and it's in your plans, this would certainly be a good time to do it. Rather than wait till the end of the football game, you have you don't have a lot to lose, and if you've worked on it and it's been successful for you, this would be a good time to do it. Well, Merring after hitting on the point after will be in to kick it off. There you see it again from the field level, and there you get an idea of just the power of Marvin Hartley. He's just bouncing off people. Difficulty about football is, on the other hand, if you don't succeed in the onside kick, you're almost saying Michigan, you're going to get another touchdown. So it's a tough decision to make. Yeah, but that's why you coaches are paid mega bucks, though. <laughs> see, 
I remember when I coached at UCLA, we were in the Rose Bowl game. We opened the game up with an onside kick, and we all thought pro throw was nuts, but we recovered the ball and scored. And <laughs> I mean, we were coaches, and we thought he was crazy. <laughs> Only, I guess, a negative, and it's not really a negative. Merring, you know, has only been forced to kick as a result of Rich right. Thompson being out. So you wonder how much time he's had a chance to devote on this. Now he's going to put the foot to it. And it's angled. Yeah, it does. So that'll push Merring and company five yards deeper. You know, I, I just, and I've had the opportunity to interview Rob, but I just wonder about people playing with a barefoot like that. That has got to hurt. Well, there's quite you a had few. some barefoot kickers when you were coaching, didn't you? Yes. I've never been a great fan of kickers. <laughs> Always let somebody else coach them. <laughs> well, that conjures up the thought of Forrest Gregg when he was referring to Mike Butler, the kicker for the Bears. And what does he know about football? He's just a kicker. Sums up the way a lot of coaches feel about kickers. Like you say, you know, you let them do their own thing. If they're successful, you don't touch them. That's exactly right. When they start messing up, that's when you start playing with them, right? We had a kicker when I woke up one morning, Saturday morning, and dreamed it kick a winning field goal if he had a gold shoe. He wanted us to go get him a gold shoe. Did you? Uh, I had nothing to do with the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> so Merring will try it again. Angles it toward the far sideline. Colasar runs it down at about the 11 or 15, 16 yard line. Look out. And he's stopped by Rob Merring. Barefoot and all. Look at him. Kind of yep. hop skipping around there. Don't step on my foot. Don't step on my foot. He made the tackle. Well, that time that ball was kicked very high. It was a little questionable whether the, he was even going to return it. The coverage got down a little bit too far then. He found one lane and almost broke this. Here's Marion. Watch him. Come in here. I'll make the hit, but just don't get my foot. Good tackle. Boy, he's not afraid to stick his nose in it. There's the scoring drive. Eight plays, 67 yards, 338. Capped off by Marvin Artley's 11-yard touchdown run, his first in 1988. Wholesale changes for the Michigan Wolverines. Their offensive unit, line, backfield. Demetrius Brown, the quarterback. Allen Jefferson, the tailback, gets the call up past the 40-yard line. Banasak among those, along with Davey, to make the stop. So Davey's back in there after getting retaped. And that should just about do it for the third period. There is a little drop off between Michigan's first offensive line and their second, although they're good. So that'll do it. After three quarters of play, and he's going to send in Chris Calloway, his 5'10, 176 pound sophomore speedster out of Chicago for Wisconsin. Don Morton, who was obscured there by Pat Simmers, his offensive coordinator. Wolverines have the ball. 41 yard line it's second down and seven as we get ready to start the fourth and final quarter of play it has been all Michigan from the first time they touched the ball Bowles well, ran a touchdown it's been all them ever since last drive really helped they got seven points and they kept the defense off the field gave them a little rest in motion Callaway to the far side second man through Allen Jefferson he stopped by Don Davey Allen Davey Jefferson made the stop Got some help. Banasak sets up a third down and four. Well, Wisconsin's giving Michigan a little of their defense. They're slanting to the wide side of the field that time, and the man from behind, Vatch, was able to come down and make the tackle. Vatch did a good job that time. Big third down play for Wisconsin's defense. They'd like to see if they can stop them and get the Badger offense back out on the field again. They scored their last possession. I'm sure they have a little confidence brewing after that TD by Marvin Hartley. Brown has time trying to go to the man coming out of his backfield pass intended for Chris Horn overthrown. Yeah, he just hurried that pass a little bit. That's their possession type pass where they send both backs out. He's been very successful in throwing that but that time he just didn't get himself set. Bo's not very happy. See look at him. That's why Demetrius Brown is not that important quarterback. They have not liked his decision-making thought process out of the field. Gillette, a wobbly kick. Vincent is back, but he won't even get close to it. It's down at the 20-yard line. Yeah, not a very good kick that time. What kind of hurried that? 
I think Mr. Schimbecker will be waiting for Mr. Gillette when he gets off the field. Well, that's, he may be, his legs may be a little tired. You know, he did a little kicking in that first half, and uh, he may be a little leg weary. Well, this 45-yard average has suffered this afternoon, as you see Lionel Crawford, lucky number 13 for the Badgers, the freshman out of Houston, Texas. So the ball right at the 20 yard line 80 yards away from hopefully getting their second touchdown of the afternoon. Crawford and the Wolverines did an excellent job that time of defending his options and cutting down and eliminating those options. Yeah, Eric Anderson outside linebacker has really been doing a good job on what we call the short side of the field. Uh, try to run the option into the short side of the field and he's able to come down the line stay with the quarterback and if he pitches the ball he's able to get on the pitch man so he's been doing a good job. He is the backup to J.J. Grant. Today's attendance 61,180 and the sun does in fact look as though it wants to, to come out. Yeah. John, you get in 18 holes of golf after this one's over, right? <laughs> Crawford with the ball. Oh, what an errant pitch, and it's intercepted again. We saw that last Saturday down in Miami. Crawford was hit almost the second he tried to get rid of the ball and pitch it back to Steve Vincy. And that's just one of those mistakes that when uh, it's going against you, it happens. Uh, Crawford, I think, knows he made a mistake that time, and uh, he had the ball out there kind of loosely, and boom, he got hit it, and it went flying. It's Miami that happened, and only probably went up in the air and was recovered in midair. Here you see it right there. He's got the ball out. See, he started to pitch it, and actually that ball was batted after he pitched it. That was just a little poor decision on his part. It's kind of, you know, halfway between should I pitch it or not. Right. Mike Evans made the pitch interception. It was hit initially by Todd Plate. And we have a new quarterback for Michigan. We've got, is it Wilbur Odom, I believe. Yes, it is. Wilbur Odom, a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Odom to Jokish. Quick little turn in pattern that time. They had two receivers the wide side of the field. One of them did a turn out. The other one did a little curl pattern. He threw it in there. Odom, he's not all that bad. He's out of San Antonio, an 87 red shirt. Prep All-American, he threw for 37 touchdowns and almost 3,300 yards in high school, breaking Tommy Kramer's passing records in the Lone Star State. So, well, Bo's giving his players a real chance to show what they can do, some of his second and third teamers. Well, right now he's got Horde in there, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. he has Horde in there. And Horde scores a touchdown. Uh, that's that quick trap play, and I'm sure he just had that call. He sent him in the game just for that. They ran a quick little trap right up the middle, and Hort has scored on that before, and he just took it right in the end zone. Some poor tackling that time. Leroy Hort out of New Orleans rambles in for the touchdown. Look at Bo. Oh, he's happy about that, I think. <laughs> he put Hort in the game just to run that play. <laughs> he says, hey, all right, Wilbur, nice job. Completes the pass, hands off for a touchdown. Two plays. Demetrius has just been demoted to the number three quarterback. And Gulam Khan comes in to attempt the point after, and he's good. Gillette might have been demoted on the PATs after he missed his last one. Well, that's one thing when you have competition. Now, here you're going to see it. A quick little trap. Left guard pulls. Boom, they hand it to Hord. He's right up the middle. Boy, quick hitting play. One tackle there. Two tackles. Lynch trying to wrap him up, and it's too late. You're not going to stop him. You know, he's listed on, according to their press guide, 215 pounds. He looks bigger than 215. <laughs> I mean, there's the initial hole, and just people late getting to him. He's what we call a load. <laughs> really, believe me, you hit him, and you know it. He's a horde. But uh, I think Michigan really figured that time Wisconsin being a slanting defense and that's why he put him in there that little trap is probably the best play against the slanting defense because if you're able to block off the backside you've got a big hole. You're supposed to travel with 60 right. I think he's got 110 players over there on the sidelines. About 110 jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> 15 jerseys. That's what he's doing. Ah Bo Adol. Slickster. 
A high kick. Owens going to field it at the 15-yard line, the 20. 25. Good block. Trying to run away. He advances the ball up to about the 37-yard line. Pretty good return by Fred Owens. Yeah, he got a good block from Paul Christ. He got a couple good blocks up the middle, and he was able to get up the field. And he's going to remain in the backfield. We haven't seen a lot of the other running backs in the backfield for Don Morton. It's been almost Marvin Hartley, Steve Vinci exclusively. Crawford remains the quarterback. Leon Hunt and Owens split back behind Lionel Crawford. We have trouble with the Michigan numbers now. They're down to the third well, unit. There was movement, I think, prematurely. It was probably Todd Nelson of Wisconsin who might have moved before the snap. Yes. A little anxious the to get off the ball there. That's a tough way to start the drive. First and 15. Everything's working just the way Bo wanted. He's getting a chance to use all his players, keep his regulars on the bench, but keep enough pressure on them so that they'll be ready to go next week. Just couldn't ask for a better opening Big Ten game if you were the Michigan football coach. First and 15 following the five yard penalty. Crawford pitches back. Owen tries to get to the outside. And there's some flags. flags I got to be over. believe late hits. He was out of bounds and then there was about one or two. There's Bo coming over there. Either that or a face mask. One of the two. He's going to chew somebody out. See, Crawford did a good job that time. He realized they were putting the pressure on him up front. He pitched the ball right away. He didn't wait too long. Well, we're wrong on all counts. It was a clip. <laughs> That's what it was called, a clip. Plays 25 yards. It took 23 seconds. 14-yard run by Horde. Now we see one of Don Morton's freshman recruits, Damone Freeman, out of Austin, Texas, has checked into the lineup. So. Penalties in a row really back him up. We can expect to see him perhaps a lot more as the season moves along. Coach Morton talked about it, trying to get some more speed in his backfield. If you, First and 28. If you hear some long silence from John and myself, it's because there are bees in the booth here. <laughs> <laughs> if we're trying to swat the bees. They're Michigan bees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. They're bees in blue. Crawford straight ahead through and not a lot of running room this time. Really good job that time by Mike Teeter, the middle guard, was able to get off the center's block and on a slant defense and get in there and make the hit. Hunt the ball carrier. Here's Damone Freeman. He goes over to the sidelines. Second and 20. Statue of Liberty on three. Ready? Don't waste it. <laughs> Save it. Crawford. Here comes some pressure. He runs away from the pressure. Tries to buy some time. Almost picked off on the play by the Wolverine secondary. Ty Plate. Almost came up with the interception. Well, Ron Zielinski just got in the backfield before Crawford ever had a chance to set up. And now that's the thing that's been hurting the quarterbacks a great deal in this game is they haven't really had a chance to get back. There you see it. It's somebody right on top of him in the middle somebody of the ground. Blew an assignment. I mean, there's no way that he can get in there that quick. But he just didn't pick him up. It's third down and 25. A country mile, you might call it. Crawford rolling to his right and pass intended for David Burks and he was one way and the ball was the other Burks tried to turn around and get it just couldn't hang on to it so that sets up a punt situation and Chris Hymans will trot back out onto the field and Kolasar will go deep for the Wolverines Bo's yelling at him return one for a touchdown well that's a tough situation there for Crawford uh, first and 28 second and 28 and uh, you just know what you got to do and Michigan was ready for it Hyman situated back at about his seven yard line. Kolasar inching up past the 35 to about the 37. Got 10 men in the line of scrimmage, but they're holding up. A line drive kick. 
and it bounces straight out of bounds, and Michigan will have the ball at their own 48-yard line. Great field position. Not a real good punt. Uh, not getting good distance on those punts, getting them up in the air, and most of them are either going off to the left or right and going out of bounds. Andy Hartley comes in now. He replaces David Wings. Hartley has been bothered by a thumb injury. You can see his right arm. It's bandaged up there. I'm sure he's been anxious to play this fall and will really look forward to next Saturday at Iowa where his brother Chuck is the starting quarterback for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, I'm sure he dreams about that game. Back in at quarterback, Wilbur Odom, number 13. His numerical counterpart for the Wolverines. Out of the eye. Jefferson, the ball carrier. Jefferson wrapped up. Picks up maybe three yards. And there's some late flag. flag. Jokish and Eddie Fletcher were exchanging pleasantries. Let's see who they call it against. It's usually against the second man. Whoever retaliated is normally the way it goes. It's gonna be a personal foul against someone. Against Wisconsin, against Michigan. Offsetting. Offsetting. Yeah, he saw them both. <laughs> Very unusual. Here's an interesting story. The young man is coming in now, number 90, Keith Mitchell, a reserve tied in out of Southgate, Michigan. He was on the Price is Right this summer, the game show, and he won a car. Now, I mean, that tells you everything happens right for the Wolverines, right? The guy came out there and wins a car, you know, hey. That's all legitimate because he wasn't out there competing for anything. Just a, a game show, a little Big delay. Job. And Jefferson doesn't have a lot of running room there. That'll set up a third. Call it about a long four, maybe. Leon Johnson did a good job that time. He got off his block, made a good tackle. Third and five, 11.08 remaining in the fourth quarter. And counting. Johnson got him from underneath. Good way to knock the ball carrier off his feet when you hit him low. Somebody else gets him high. Odom surveys the Badger defense. Split backfield. Here comes Safety the blitz. blitz. And he dumps it off to the open man, Jokish. Jokish trying to get away from Vincent. He didn't do it, but he did get the first down. Well, that's very difficult on a defensive back that time. You're one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they kind of thought it was coming. They just threw the out pattern, and he had good time to throw it. So it's first and 10 for the Wolverines, 10-38 and counting here. And that's the story. It's been all Michigan. From the first snap, they were here to play. Ranked 19th in the country. This will do nothing to hurt their rating. Misdirection play that time, but Wisconsin was ready for it. They tried to run to the short side of the field, faked like they were going wide, but cut it back in. Wisconsin didn't react to it. They stayed right at home. Jefferson, the ball carry. It's not a well-executed play either. A lot of times, misdirection, the whole concept behind it is to, to get the defense going one way, and they just didn't execute well. But then, as we said, uh, they're playing with their second and third teamers, and they don't get the reps in practice like the first team. Hartley did a good job on that. He reacted well to that play. Second and nine, under 10 and counting. Badger line shifts the last second. Odom scrambling, pressure, and in and out of the hands. It might have been Horn, the fullback. I couldn't, no. Just he waited too long on. to throw at that time. Should have thrown it a lot sooner. Here, the fullback was wide open in the flat. Two weeks from today, Wisconsin returns home to face the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Check your local listings. Find out when and where you can watch that game on this Wisconsin Sports Station. Third and nine. Out of the eye. Odom, play fake to Jefferson over the middle. It's been there all day long. Great play by Vincent. Excellent play that time. That man was wide open going down the middle. It looked like they hit six for sure, but he came in and made a fine play. Troy Vincent, the freshman out of Yardley, Pennsylvania, and you get an idea of some of his athletic ability. And John said the play was there, but Vincent came over and just knocked it away. There you see it, he's going right down the middle. They're going for six, and boom. Excellent play by Vincent. Maybe a sign of the future. 
Fourth down. They're going for it. Well, Gillette can't hit from this deep, nor can Gulam Khan after his last attempt. It's fourth and nine. Wisconsin showing blitz. Back out of it. And here comes. Trying to apply some pressure, and it's going to be caught what for the first throw. down by Jokish. A great job by the sophomore Odom under pressure, applying the pressure. Was that uh, Banasak? Wisconsin had a call it twist defense on there. Their defensive end and tackles. The tackles go to the outside, the ends come in, and there you see, boom, he's right there. Batch applying the pressure. He just couldn't run down the, the speedier Odom. Yeah, and a fine pass that time. But a penalty, I think, against somebody. They haven't seen the signal yet. Well, it's against Michigan the way they're walking back. Well, maybe not. Against Wisconsin. Roughing the passer. I think roughing the passer. Now well, it had to be Dan Batch. He was the guy that was applying the pressure to Odom. Well, he's looking at the scoreboard saying it can't end soon enough. That'll give Michigan a first down right about the 17, 18 yard line. Oh, no, they give. I'm sorry. At the After the catch. Now he's going to get it at the nine yard line. Half the distance. Now a costly penalty. Another of those mental mistakes. Been a few of those. That's the reason why the score is what it is. First and goal from the nine yard line. Jefferson, big hole, Jefferson, touchdown. Fullback and guard again. I'm tired of saying it. The fullback and the guard pull, and they make great blocks at the point of attack, and there's nobody there. I'd like to know how many times Michigan has run that same play. I don't care if it was right or left today, though. They just run that to the. I'd like to know how many times they've run it. Bo has been there. I had a dollar for every time they've run it. They could have retired yesterday. He loves it when they do it right, believe me. Oh. That's their bread and butter right there. You got it. That's why they are one of the best teams year in and year out. Snap, the kick, it's up, and it's good. Well, there's really not much to say. You know, Bo's not really trying to pull it on. Uh, I don't have any love for Bo either, but he's got all the seconds in there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Save that part of the videotape, please, okay? <laughs> Save that part. We will send that to the Smithsonian in Washington. John Jardine says, I don't really have any uh, love loss for the guy. In fact, but, I hate him, you know? But, he but he's good at what he does. And his team is well prepared here today. Here you see the guard blocking out. The fullback already made his block. One man from the offside had a chance to even hit him, not make the tackle, just hit him. remaining and it's 62-7. Somebody get a band-aid because this one hurts. No question about it. Based upon what Wisconsin was able to do, do down in Miami last Saturday and then to come home for your Big Ten opener, it hurts. A lot of disappointment over on the Wisconsin sidelines. Coaches and players alike. And then it's embarrassing too. You hate to, you hate to get uh, handed a lopsided defeat like this. Makes it tough to come to practice on Monday. I've been there, man. I you know it's tough. Vincent fumbles at the five. Now tries to run with it. And he's going to be stopped shy of the 20-yard line. I mean, everything that Wisconsin has done today, with the exception of that one touchdown drive, has virtually gone just the other way. I mean, it's just been one of those nasty days where it... Well, you know, you got to face the feather just outmanned here today right. that's all Michigan's got some great athletic talent they came in here ready to play football and it really hasn't been much of a game Crawford continues at quarterback well let's see slant pattern the first time we've seen that to Scott Bester and that picks up about eight and a half yards good grab by Bester uh, that pass was thrown a little bit behind him and he reached back and made a nice reception. There are the numbers on it. 
capped off the eight yard run by Jefferson and uh, there have been holes big enough where I think your eye John can run through some of those backwards. I might have been I don't know about well, you. <laughs> I got that bad wheel that's right. <laughs> Crawford going down the line and he is wrapped up on the play. See if you just look there you see no Michigan players are on the ground and that's the way to play the veer option. Make sure your people are not getting blocked and they're moving down the line. That way, anytime the back decides to cut up, there's somebody there to make the hit. Tim Williams, who's out of Milwaukee, attended Marquette University High School, led his team to the state title. Makes the stop. Third down and two for the Wisconsin offense. Once again, Freeman in the backfield, the freshman. Two tight ends for Wisconsin. Blitz. And here comes Crawford, and he has the first down. Crawford did that all on his own. I don't know if that was a busted play or a design play. Well, they had the blitz on, and uh, he just saw who was going to make the tackle. He lowered his shoulder and went right into him. There is an injured Badger down on the play, and it appears to be center Matt Jokey. Wisconsin can ill afford to get a center hurt. Well, they've got Bastion is, is hurt, but they're hopeful of getting him back soon. He had back problems earlier in the season. You see Crawford, he's just going to take dead aim at the tackler and try to get upfield and get the first down. He paid the price. He sure did. But he didn't shy away from that contact. And it appears like Jokey's going to be all right. That's good news. So the Badgers have the first down thanks to Lionel Crawford. Keith Peterson will move up a couple of notches from the line and from tackle to center. He had been the starting center for Wisconsin in the first three games. So it's not a spot he's unfamiliar with. Anderson makes the catch. Tight rope down the sidelines. Check that. It's Kerry Miller, a reserve tied in. And that's a great pass. I mean, he just led that perfectly. It was a fly pattern going right down the sidelines, and he let it go just in time. Excellent throw that time. Kerry Miller, a transfer from Tulsa University, back when Don Wart was there. And this is just like you say, outstanding execution. This is what Crawford really needs. I mean, this is what he needs to be the starting quarterback, which I think he'll be next week, is to be able to complete some of these passes. That's that's the one to take down two. Don Dardine says he's going to start at quarterback next Saturday. Well, I think he will. He's made some things happen here today, and he's getting some confidence. He can run the option play as well. Whatever money you've got in your savings, put it in the bank. There it is. Put that on number 13, starting in Iowa next week. Damone Freeman, the freshman, inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Remember, Van told you to put the money. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I'm only going by your recommendation. No, I agree. Lionel has played an outstanding game for the time he's been in there today. He's run the option well. He has run the ball well when called upon. And like you say, you're trying to infuse some sort of excitement into the offense, and he's been the guy to do it. It's no knock against Tony Lauer. It's a statement of fact. Yeah, and, and the big question on Crawford is, can he throw the football? And I think he's at least today it. we've seen a few times when he can throw it. Owens and Hunt in the backfield. was to try to drive for their second touchdown. Pitch back. Hunt. And almost got in. He was knocked out of bounds. He thought he got six. He goes down to the two. I tell you what, for his sake, I hope they give him the ball in the next carry. Good decision by Crawford. He came down the line. He didn't wait too long to pitch the ball. Here you'll see it again. Coming down left. Pitches right away. As soon as he read the defense. Leon Hunt. Oh, you know, I don't know if he got that or not. That was awfully close. Well, that foot might have stepped out of bounds. That's the only reason he didn't get it. Uh, at this point in time, you give it to him anyway. Come on. Third and one. Touchdown, Lionel Crawford. The young freshman has his first collegiate six-pointer, and he's going to keep the ball. <laughs> All right. He's excited as he should be. He's done a good job here. Two drives, he's led him to touchdowns and done a good job. <laughs> well, he now gave the ball back to the ball boy. But he said, Lionel, you've got to give it back. He's a happy young man, and well, he should be. That's what college football is all about. It's a game of emotion. And he's got a lot of it right now. Well, he should. 
Rob Merring into a tempo going after. Kick is up, and it's good. So the Badgers have scored their 14th point. Marvin Artley, the first touchdown. Lionel Crawford on the QB sneak as TD number two. Just a good quarterback sneak that time. He followed the block of the center and easily got in the end zone. He's down there, and he's celebrating now. It is mine, guys. Coming in, Michigan had won the last six. They will make it seven after this one. But uh, based upon what we've seen in the second half, maybe Wisconsin's offense has gotten a little glimmer of hope that uh, they can move the ball. Granted, it's against Michigan's two and three deeps. But you'll take whatever you can get, right, Coach? That's exactly right. And look, it's like a little daylight at the end of the tunnel. You know? I mean, Young man has come in here and performed pretty well. He's made some mistakes, but he's made some great plays also, and that's what you expect out of a freshman. Hey, onside kick in here. Well, Michigan is uh, looking for the onside kick. Yeah, to they've be got honest. Callaway, McMurtry, all there. They've got them all up there. One man deep. to lose here. Now Merring is in to kick it off. You know, a little pooch kick where you just kick it straight up there like that. Hopefully your guys can run down under it, but it's going to be Colasar about the 17-yard line. And he is hit there by number 46, Robert takes, Newell. Takes it up to about the 30-yard line. There you see the scoreboard. Six minutes, 33 seconds remaining. Michigan leading 62 to 14. 80 yard drive uh, covering two minutes and 30 seconds. Of course, the big play was Crawford to Kerry Miller. That was a big play. It's a long pass capped off by Crawford himself. Wilbur Odom back in at quarterback. He has their third string quarterback, but based upon what we've seen from this young sophomore, he's going to be number two by next week at Michigan State. Where is he looking for the ball carrier? Well, Michigan just lined up with two tight ends and running that eye lead play, and that time Williams just broke it to the outside. Tackled by Bill and Tony. Second down and nine following play. As we wind down under the six minute mark. A lot of Michigan players getting some good playing time here today. That's the Michigan sweep play. We haven't seen that today. It's a quick race tension, trying to run down from behind and making a stop, preventing a touchdown by Tracy Williams, who has had a great afternoon after Tony Bowles went over on the bench. Right now, Bo's reaching back way in the playbook, and he's running some plays that uh, I'm sure are going to put some tendencies on charts for everybody that has to get ready for all these plays. That's split backs. Boy, just some great. You're talking second and third teamers here, and they're still executing very well. Here they are again in the split backfield, two tight ends. Inside the 30 yard. Fortino fumble, Eddie Fletcher recovered. Well, that was just poorly executed. Somebody missed the block at the line of scrimmage. There was a lot of penetration there. He coughed up the football. So Wisconsin comes up with a rare Michigan turnover. Eddie Fletcher made the recovery. Victor Fortino was in there to jar the ball loose. And takes over at about the 38 yard line. Good field position. There it is, bouncing around. Eddie Fisher right there to pick Fletcher. it up. Fletcher, Fletcher. excuse me. Eddie Fisher, uh, his eligibility is no longer good. <laughs> Bumble for Wisconsin now. Did Crawford get on top of it or not? It appears that he did. There was just an exchange problem right there between the center and Crawford.
Looks like it was just a bad exchange there. Crawford never really got the control of the ball. Second and ten. Peterson still the center after Jokey was shaken up. Peters looked to the near side. Crawford looking to pass. Now Peters breaks his pattern. Crawford runs to the sidelines and whoa! What? <laughs> I'll tell you what. He had to hurdle the bench. And then he had to stop himself. There's a cyclone fence there. It's amazing he didn't get hurt. It really is. Well, this was going to be a quick look in pass. He came down the line, then all of a sudden reared up, wanted to throw, but the man was completely covered. So he did the right thing here. He's only got one receiver to go to, and he came out running with the ball. Now keep this going. Watch this. He hurdles the bench. Oh, 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 and then he goes right into the cyclone fence. Holy cow. Third and 12. That was a heck of a price to pay for a two yard loss. Crawford, straight drop back, runs away from the pressure, looking looking downfield, runs away from the pressure, then he's finally tripped up. And he had nobody to throw to there. There really wasn't much he could do there. They only had one receiver out on that side of the field, and he was completely covered, so Crawford had no choice but to just keep stringing it out. Brian Townsend made the stop. He was looking for his tight end. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage, but I don't know if he could have gotten the ball there with the way he was trying to scramble or not. Brings up a fourth down situation. It's too bad they had the turnover and couldn't move the ball to take advantage of it. The punting from about his 16 yard line. Hymans, the punter, Kolasar, the receiver. He sets up at about the 32 yard line. Bacon. No. Good kick this time. Excellent Driving kick. Kolasar back. He calls four. And makes the fair catch. This time, no one got near him. Victor That's Fortino. the best one of the day, right there. He stayed about five yards away. Said, "No way, I'm going to get called for this two times." He really got his leg into that one, or his foot. It's late, folks. <laughs> Michigan offense huddled on the sideline. Bull still rearing him on. Oh, yeah. So the Wolverine offense with the ball at the 23 yard line. There he is. We have a new quarterback. They have gone down to their depth chart once again. Quarterback is Ken Solom. You know, I went three deep and I didn't go four deep. I just... Bad preparation on my behalf again. Hartley uh, in the second half being a very active linebacker. His name has been called three or four times here in the second half. Bo must have known something that we didn't. Stop. Second and ten for the Wolves. And they have been growling a lot today. An angry pack. Pitch back. Is Tracy Williams. He's had a heck of a day since Bowles went out. Bowles, I don't even know if he saw a series of downs in the second half here. There was really no need to. You don't want to risk run the risk of injury. Yeah, great experience for Williams. He's getting a lot of ball carrying time, getting a chance to read the hole. We might see Brett, Brad Brecky, who was Wisconsin's third string quarterback between he and Mark Mango. Kissling checks out. Third name to the Wolves, under two and a half. Going deep for Jokic, incomplete. He's tried to hit Jokic down the sideline. They had three men out, <coughs> excuse me, on the other side, and Jokic just streaked down the left sideline, had one step on the man, but the ball was overthrown. He's only a sophomore. Boy, what a target he's going to be as he gets a little bit better. And both saying, come on. Dan, 6'7, 215 pounds. Get him on the weight program, and it's going to be a, a factor. In the Big Ten next couple of years. Bester back deep. Full out rush. Gillette back in the punt. Line drive punt. Bester, 37. Ran away from one man. Advanced that ball up to about the 45 yard line. Well, they had a rush on, so he didn't get much help that time. He took the ball and did what he had to do just get up the field. Yeah, let's see if there will be a quarterback change for Wisconsin. It appears that there will be. Don Morton giving some last 
second instructions to Brad Brecky. So the walk on from Stevens Point makes his first appearance at quarterback. He was the punter earlier in the season for Wisconsin. Stevens Point to check. First and ten for the Badgers and great field position. 25 yard line. Brecky pitches back. Hunt trying to run down the ball. Still can't get it. Still loose. Who's going to get it? Wisconsin has it. Oh, boy. Running down finally. Follow the bouncing ball. <laughs> I think that was Strauser. Strauser. David Strauser. He alertly saw it and got it. Let's go! Ooh. He was hit just as he got ready to pitch the ball and pitched it behind him. Brad Brecky will have nightmares now about that pitch. A lot of people having a chance at this ball. Inside handoff to Long Freeman. Freeman spins around, moves up past the 35 to about the 36 yard line. Good running room for the freshman. We saw Damone Freeman, but we did not see Jimmy Henderson, the other freshman. Winding down now with one minute to play. Third and 19. A long acre to go. Recky, and he's going to be wrapped up there. 49 and counting. It's going to be fourth down and probably have to punt the ball away. I would think so. They're probably not going to get. Run one more play. So Michigan will roll to their seventh, and I do mean roll. Seventh straight win over the Badgers. Michigan looking for a fake here. They're not going to go with an all out rush. Hyman. Another good kick. Kolasar will call for and make the fair catch with 10 seconds remaining. So the Wolverines will have to run one more play. And it has been all Michigan. I know that sounds like a broken record, but when you look at the score, that's the reason why. Well, it's been Michigan right from the start, and I think that's what made the game so difficult is that they got out in front and uh, really actually dominated this game from the very first play and just haven't let up. That's all. Their well-prepared team came in here and executed everything almost to perfection. That's a good reason why. The man with his legs crossed, he can light up another victory cigar. Be an interesting ball game next Saturday when they travel to play Michigan. Or they don't travel; they host Michigan State. Pitch out going left. Hit good blocking there, and that should that should do it. And there's a late penalty flag. Oh gosh! With one second to go, you know, that, that's that high caliber Big Ten officiating right there. <laughs> I mean, it's 62 to 14, and this guy's throwing a penalty flag. Well, if it's a something that he thinks he should call it if it's off not offside or something if it's a personal foul or something he's almost got to call it they get graded you know on every play just like the players it's against the defense so face mask unless something else happens this should be the last play of the game <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been easy folks believe me don't ever say that long afternoon Think he'll throw a pass here? No, I don't think so. I think <laughs> this is it. Oh, pitch back. Jefferson. And that will do it. So the final second ticked off the scoreboard. The two coaches meet at midfield to exchange some words. And can't be a lot of conversation there when you see that final scoreboard. So Michigan rolls in their Big Ten opener, beating the Badgers. The final count 62-14. John, just got to make believe this game never even existed as you get ready for Iowa next week, I would imagine. Well, if you're going to get ready for Iowa, that's exactly what you got to do. Uh, you can't spend a lot of time dwelling on this in meetings or anything else. Uh, you look at the films once and do a lot of critiquing, and then you get ready for Iowa. And 
you know, there were some bright spots, not very many, but the play of the quarterback Crawford uh, certainly gives some hope, and I think they'll put in some new plays and do some different things next week to get ready for Iowa. Okay, the Badgers go on the road next Saturday at the University of Iowa. We'll see you in two weeks when Wisconsin comes back home to host the University of Illinois. For John Jardine, I'm Van Stout. Thanks for joining us again. The final score, Michigan 62, Wisconsin 14. So long.